Phew. Phew. We almost had to not do the episode this week, Josiah. Do you have the Do you have a sniffly in the sniffles? I got I got some sniffly sniffles. We were supposed to do. Can we say that we were going to kind of do like a, a special celebratory exclusive this weekend? In, oh yeah, this past weekend. Yeah, in recognition of uh, Hitler's birthday, uh, we were going <coughs> to do a, a, a great exclusive. And I was like, I can't do it, man. I'm sick. And this is real. I wasn't. I wasn't lying. I'm like, my sinuses are sort of blowing up inside of my brain. I can't think. I'm, I'm truly well troubled. Yeah, that's funny because I, um, there was a exclusive released yesterday to go behind the real calendar oh, of wow. what day we're doing this. But there was a exclusive released yesterday where it was Josiah doing research was the exclusive, and and then there was a tweet at the pod that he needed to blow his nose after the exclusive came out. So, so there's a, like, lo- a lot of sinus troubles, a lot of sinus, <laughs> sinus troubles in the nation this yeah. week, is what you're saying? Yeah. But so, um, I've done a full reset on my body, so I'm all good. <laughs> okay, good. Um, I, mm-hmm. I, I can understand why you might need it because it feels like there has been so much happening online this week. Like most of the messages that I've been getting from you are just like LMAO and then a link to something that's like a bizarre sexual like <laughs> Instagram message or like LMAO <laughs> Wait, and it's a, a link to whatever that that like the really long all caps like uh, Bill Billingsley splooge message. Oh, yeah. Right. That thing. Uh huh. Right. So that <laughs> uh, or again, LMAO and a link to a thread. From, I can't remember any of it ever. That's the thing. It's like <laughs> right. This is all just flowing right through you. Like, just but I did. I did get to have the experience yesterday again to keep uh, admitting what day it is. <clears throat> um, I did actually go for dinner with a friend that we haven't hung out with in like quite a few years, mm-hmm. and so it was like once again just sort of explaining the pod for the first time is this kind of <laughs> like. Mind blowing out of body experience. <laughs> like <laughs> it's like impossible to do, but then you're just like, what path? There's also like thirty paths you could go down while explaining the pod. Yeah, it's sort of you can choose which stories to lean on for your audience. But I had that moment today of like, this is a weird. Like it, it sort of always comes up like once or twice, or like you know my sister will mention it if we're around family, and then we'll be like, oh, what's that? I'm like, well, it's um. A thing where uh, two teens who run a confessions <laughs> account make uh, uh, Instagram polls about whether uh, a guy I know in Calgary is weird, and then the next day accuse me of being a homophobe on Twitter. <laughs> right. <laughs> with yeah, delightful like, image macros. <laughs> <laughs> and I can say, how do you contextualize that? Even for people listening to the pod who haven't seen those tweets, how do you contextualize that anecdote, which was, like, fairly it's accurate? Fucked. Yeah, it's fucked because, like, even a lot of our most active people have not listened to every episode, so they don't know How all could the you? shit. But it's even more fucked to be someone who knows everything and knows about <laughs> Sally and Jake <laughs> right. the Snakester and knows about Sonic whatever's birthday and, like, all these deep things. It's too <laughs> fucked. It's, like, fucking insane. I think we've made a huge mistake. <laughs> you know, we're coming up to the release of uh, the... the End of, of this phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Avengers <laughs> Endgame. And in many ways, like, we are building, I think, our own, uh, like, you know, the Blink Cinematic Universe. That This will all culminate in, like, a grotesque, overblown um, <laughs> celebration of each of those characters before they all disintegrate. Like, Sally just sort of turns to dust in front of you. I, I don't watch those movies, so. Aren't you, like, a film critic, Josiah? Yeah, film, <laughs> not <laughs> not movie. Oh wow! Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, congrats to you, man. <clears throat> um, fuck. Where were we going with this? Oh, just um, just like just talking ha- about ourselves. Well, it was just because it, it was very <laughs> overwhelming to uh, right before we record look at an image macro that's like yeah me talking about how <laughs> yeah. I don't support you lesbian lesbians. rights. <laughs> Yeah, and the weirdest part is you made that image. That's the thing. I made that image of one of my favorite quotes of myself. Right? Oh, I know what I was going to say. It was the, the thing whenever I would talk to relatives in the past who, like, already didn't. Because I've always had jobs that, like, people don't understand. And so they would always be, like, we'd, like, see a celebrity on TV. And they'd be like, oh, are you going to interview them? You know, like, that's just their <laughs> way of, like. And, and so that was the old thing. But now now they'll just be like. 
oh, are you going to do a podcast about it? <laughs> I'm just like, uh, yeah, I am. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And then that basically you do, right? It's, you know. Exactly. You, like we were, <laughs> that's the thing is they're not wrong because this is about anything except for Blink-182. Has anything ever got onto the pod that you had to say to someone? <laughs> what do you I, mean? I'm sorry. Oh. Look, it, it felt soon, but I'm so excited to talk about the song. Right. And I'm trying to think how you said it. Did how, you say it with the O? Did you say sorry? Or I have said, we adopted an American yet? Yeah, I said I'm I, sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. This is going to be a repeat too. of we, last week's yeah, issues. Yeah, in every way. But I think also the funny thing is while I was looking up this one is not only is they're the Canadian pronunciation of sorry, but there's our reputation as Canadians as being such an apologetic people. Right. Which, like, I feel like I can see it in, like, a superficial way, almost along with maple syrup and hockey and all that kind of shit. But having been in the American South a couple months ago, I came back and thought that all Canadians are huge assholes. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I remember being in the South on tour for the first time and, and friend of the pod, Justin, remarked upon maybe our first experience in like a, a golden griddle or like IHOP or something like that. Uh, Waffle House. Waffle House. Um, was, after this, like everyone was so nice to us in the restaurant. And the server was amazing. And he was like, I... I didn't realize Southern hospitality was real. I thought Southern hospitality was just like an ironic thing that African-Americans said about the way that they were treated in the South. Like, he, thought <laughs> he, only it was, knew the... he only knew it as irony. <laughs> like, wow. No. Damn. Imagine seeing the world and thinking everything was ironic. What a, what a hell that would be. Well, yeah, what a curse. What a curse. <laughs> yeah, like, when, okay, so we went to, we were in Atlanta and we were at uh, Little Five Points. Shout out Little Five Points, the weird, like, rockabilly-looking skull, skull restaurant mm-hmm. thing there and everything. And we went into a vintage store. And <clears throat> I don't know if it's because I was wearing my uh, X swatch or what, or just because I'm so cool to begin with. But this dude came over and, like, just name-dropped that <laughs> he used to be on a Victory Records band. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> like, he just, like... And then he talked to me for, like, so long about his experiences being on a Victory Records band and touring into Canada... Um, and all this stuff. Get him on the pod. Well, the thing is, he, I didn't get a chance to bring up the pod because, again, he was talking so much about his experience on Victory Records <laughs> and how he had a medical issue, so he had to stop touring, and then they eventually got dropped, and there was all these lawsuits and shit, and all of his coworkers were, like, scowling at him because he was, like, so excited and <laughs> ditching his... Like, he seriously talked to me for 20 minutes. What to the point where was I, he in? Oh, fuck. I can't remember oh, what they're called. But I, I literally can't. I'll find it. I'll find it later, and I'll... I'll tweet it. Um, Victory Records bands from Atlanta. Go ahead. But I, so I did find him later. I'm I'm really. I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm really good at stalking people on <laughs> it's, Facebook. Yeah, it's come up once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> so I found him like immediately. Sick. Um, but anyway, so he told me all about being dropped from Victory Records and being in this um, fight with Tony or whatever that guy's name is, and then. I ended up buying this. Uh, we left, and then I was like, oh, I, I fucking love that guy. I want to go talk to him more. Maybe I'll just go buy a jacket because I wanted to get a jacket anyways. Oh, so jackets. I bought this, like, oh, yeah. I, I bought, yeah, and this was like my, this was like a new next level of jackets for me. I bought this, like, red women's coat that is very Noel Gallagher looking, but also, like, very loud. Um, so I bought that from him. We, like, I, st- I, it was so weird. I was like, should I, like, ask for his Instagram? But I was too nervous because wow. he was so cool. <laughs> So then the next day I went somewhere else in this new red jacket that's like so loud. And someone else in Atlanta was like, came up to me and was like, yo, you're dripping. And I was like, god damn, no one would ever say this to me in Canada. Like I just get yelled at to go back to the 80s out the window from Vans in Calgary. (laughs) Like people are just rude here and suck. Dude, that's amazing. I did. That's congratulations, man. That's that's really that's a special experience. It was like a really nice time. So that's what I think of when I think of America. And I think of maybe maybe in Canada, if someone bumps into you, they'll say sorry. But otherwise, they're just like assholes. Yeah, that's totally true. I think the I'm sorry thing is kind of like the A thing where we're not really sitting around being like, oh, you know, like really. But 
In the same way that Americans say, huh, we say A. So anywhere that you might say, huh, an A kind of just goes in as a colloquialism that you don't really notice. And I feel like sorry, I don't know exactly what it subs in for, but if someone's kind of like going through a crowd or whatever, so I was like, sorry, 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 sorry. They're not actually <laughs> sorry. Like no one is apologizing. Yeah. So I, right. it's, I, I don't know what you would say if you were from Nashville or you were from Atlanta. Maybe you would do the same thing, but I feel like it's it's our default when like just anything happens, like up, oh, sorry, sorry, but it's, yeah, it's never an apology. So I think we don't it gets mean mistaken. it. No, we're an awful hard people. Yeah, I agree. So yeah, I've never been told that I'm dripping in in Calgary. <laughs> That's cool. Well, you know what song is dripping? I'm sorry by Blink One Eighty Two. I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, Josiah, what's before we get into this um, basically prog rock song by Blink Standards? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are your like initial sort of thoughts as you came uh, to this episode? I know we both have a lot of loaded feelings about the album. Well, it's obviously sorry season. Mm-hmm. Um, in between last week's episode and this week's episode, uh, Beyonce has released a demo of a song called "Sorry." So I think she also knew and was listening to Blink One Fifty Five. She should come on the pod. Yeah, maybe. Okay. I mean, yeah. No, you're right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's probably not a head. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> this is definitely for heads only. That's cool. But we appreciate yeah, like, the shout out. I just feel like it might be a bit off topic if she came on. Mm, no, got to stay focused. I understand. Um, but yeah, it's clearly sorry season. It's the time of year where everyone is thinking about the word sorry and talking about it in songs, specifically us with these two episodes and <laughs> yeah. uh, Beyonce it, with it's an old demo. Sort of accidentally, I feel like I, I like was had like an earnest moment a day or two ago and sent you like a long message just being like, hey, man, I really I haven't been pulling my weight even more than usual. I'm really sorry about it. Uh, that was a really interesting message because I think you were trying to italicize words, but it was on Gchat. So you were all capsing them. Yeah. And it really did have the same effect as that sex text that I sent you. <laughs> right. Like if you had just thrown in a few uh, eggplant emojis, I think we would have been fine. OK, cool. Well, next time I'll I'll be sure to. <laughs> that would be great. More now, squirting. Someone, Someone make us one of those, but just as a general apology message. That would be sick. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that would oh, be more, love it. more useful for us as Canadians. So there, there's, a, you know, literal, you know, stories in the air. There's these, I guess these are also literal stories. They're all literal. Everything is literal. They're all literal, but but it's rare that an apology actually means something. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think in the in the age of cancellation, People are always saying, oh, should we be canceling people? Should we be shutting people down? One thing that would help clarify everything is if people would fucking learn how to apologize. <laughs> right. Yeah, that would be helpful. <laughs> it's like, like we shouldn't be canceling this celebrity just because they did this one thing. And then you look at the celebrity's response and they're like, I'm sorry that you think that I did that. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> there have been like two decent celebrity apologies, right? Have there? I mean, well, I don't now know. You're really, you're really on a thin, on thin ice. If you're gonna, <laughs> I think we could all agree. <laughs> we, can, we can all agree. I mean, when Harvey Weinstein misquoted those Jay Z lyrics in his initial <laughs> statement, uh, yeah, that, yeah, that was good. You know, I'll just leave. Uh, I'll leave the nation to wonder which two apologies <laughs> I've, I've personally accepted. One of them's going to be yours, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen. I want to say I'm very sorry for writing an image macro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> where I said I was against lesbian rights. Um, I want to clarify, um, you know, I, I'm just like on the fence. I think it is really hard to talk about this song without talking about Dude Rancher as a whole. But yeah. on its own, the song was always like a little bit forgettable to me. But then revisiting it today really? after all the after all the bullshit we've been covering lately, it just sounds fucking incredible and like so insanely good. Yeah, I, I feel like this song always stuck out for me. Because, you know, one of the things that I think I was like, this is not like a unique thing to be really obsessed with. But when you're like getting into records and you're like, oh, what? Oh, like, oh, th- what are my favorite opening songs to records? And then you're like, what CDs? Let's be honest here. And like, what are the what are my favorite last songs? And and oh, it feels like a lot of the CDs that I like have really sick, like track sevens. Like, that's a thing. Um, yeah. Oh, totally. Track seven. Track seven's like always so sick. And 
And so I always obsessed with this song as one of like my favorite album closers, which is funny because technically the song itself isn't what closes the album, which is sort of part of, I think why we have to talk about Dude Ranch as a whole, we talk about the song because there's something so perfect about how the song itself actually ends. Right. And we'll get to the actual ending in a second, but yeah, yeah, that's true. And yeah, so track three is almost always the hit, which it definitely is on, on Dude Ranch. (laughs) <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, the, the ending of I'm Sorry is a total perfect ending and something that I think kind of actually stuck with me more than I realized because the music fades out and there's feedback at the end. Um, and I did that specifically at the end of the prenup album and I didn't realize that That's that might amazing. have been actually what I was thinking of. It's just embedded in there. Yeah. Like I, I listen to the song a lot. I feel like, again, we can sort of talk about it structurally, but the, the the sort of way that it that it moves and the way that it's basically like there the decline <laughs> you know it's like four <laughs> parts that just sort of repeat a lot is like feels like it highlights so much of what they're good at in this era like you get so many different things that Scott gets to do and you get like a few cool different like ways of Tom like playing the same riff or using the same idea you get like the verse that's just bass and Scott like playing super fucking fast. And I feel like it sort of serves at the end of the record and also just like going back and visiting it in isolation as this like amazing summary of what was so perfect about the band at that time, which I feel like is something that we often say about the songs that we really like, that they somehow hit every kind of piece of what was good uh, of of the du du Ranch era. <laughs> du Ranch, yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's it. Sorry, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think... I mean, you're right. It's so funny because I never viewed it as being this, like, prog epic, but instead I just felt like it repeated itself too much. Yeah. Listening back to it, I I think it maybe does. Like, you'd lose kind of half of the repetition, but use all the, like, stuff where they really kind of change the style of it, and it would be just as impactful. Like, I'm always surprised when, like, the third verse comes in or whatever. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. We're still here, right? Sick, sick. <laughs> um, but as a kid, I don't know, maybe it was just because I was so, like, enamored of hearing something like this for the first time that, like, nothing feels too long. Right. Um, well, okay. I want to point out to you kind of along the lines of what you're saying about how it sums everything up. Once again, this is a recycled riff, which I think actually just straight up a lot. It's funny. I feel like if Mark does it or we get mad or, like, in some sometimes we get mad when riffs are recycled, but often... It's just fun and nice. Yeah, totally. I love fun and nice things. I know you do. That's why I'm going to show you this, my friend. (laughs) So this is from Montreal in 1996, and it's them playing Peggy Sue. God. Yeah, I remember that from the Peggy Sue episode, right? Oh, yeah, maybe. We've been I mean, te- teasing this in our own way. <laughs> I knew there was one, but I didn't know if it was that one I for think sure. So. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, dude. But, like, it, it's uh, it, it's great to see, like, the genesis of those ideas, right? To hear the Up All Night riff in the back of some other or whatever the fuck that was, right? Like, it's... Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know, just the yeah, idea cause it, that... It, it, it makes Tom DeLonge just seem like a teen playing guitar in his room yeah which is, totally which is kind of all that anyone is like i mean i'm not a huge fan of the band black mountain i used to be into them a little bit they're from vancouver but i remember reading an interview with Stephen mcbean the the main guy and he was like yeah i mean all i'm ever doing is just like like i've just been sitting in my room trying to find cool guitar riffs since i was 16 years old yeah and like that's like i don't know that's kind of sick that's a that's a good way to remember why we ever liked rock music as a society. (laughs) Also, dude, the, the kind of, I don't know, a couple of years ago, the black mountain album that starts with just like the synth, like the, Ooh, 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 Ooh. And then it's the big riff. Like, how do you not like that? 
I think I'm just like way too <laughs> the opposite of high to get into it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, but I, I also think like what's interesting about hearing it is it's always like these older songs where you kind of see the evolution of those things and you see the kind of riffs being recycled and, and played with. And it's this reminder that at that time these were actually sort of active and engaged sort of creative people. Whereas now everything that Blink does feels like this sort of highly thought out, strategized sort of corporate decision. Whereas, sure. or, or even like maybe that it was just too rushed, whereas Tom clearly remembered this riff because he right. loved it yeah. and he had it in his back pocket for like months or whatever. Yeah, that's true. It's so, the other thing about so that sick. is that it, it makes me realize that something really cool about I'm Sorry is that it starts with a breakdown. Yeah, which is like totally. Insanely sick. And from talking to our guests, I already realized, and our guest, uh, spoiler alert, doesn't love the lyrics, but I realized that this is basically just a Bane song. <laughs> like, if you just look at the lyrics out of context, it's like, don't bide your time. Are you kidding? Has there ever been a more amazing <laughs> core opening to a song? Yeah. Like, that's if true. that's not a carry on lyric, I've never <laughs> lived. That's exciting. We should get uh, let's get some some Bane members on the pod. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's some interesting uh, shit that you can read in the comment sections of lambgoat.com about the singer of Bane, um, but that's neither here nor there. Mm, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know. I personally think that starting a pop punk song that's in halftime with the line "Don't bide your time" <laughs> on this album that's about like growing up and saying goodbye to old friends and like heartbreak and stuff. I think it's an amazing line. It really is. I don't think I thought about it at all. This is one where maybe I haven't thought about the lyrics outside of you know, I'm sorry being repeated. But "Don't bide your time" is sick. It's so good, and it's such a like deep. 16 year old phrase <laughs> right like you've like, just sort of figured I, like out he what definitely doesn't know is. what it means <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like no yeah no one and also what does biting even mean i mean i kind of get it in in uh context and then maybe this should be joe biden's uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> his theme song this might be the the sort of pick uh pickup that his campaign <laughs> needs if he just gets you know Gets the or it's like the double entendre or... that we need. Don't bide your time. And everyone's like, yeah, we won't. <laughs> Thank you for reminding us. Right. Yeah, this is impressive. <laughs> Don't bidet <Bide>. your time. <laughs> uh, I guess bide just means remain or stay somewhere. How long must I bide here to wait for the answer? So it really doesn't work in any sentence other than don't bide your time. <laughs> yeah, because even that sentence sounded terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't really work. It's a single purpose <laughs> word. <laughs> Hell yeah. It only <laughs> exists to be on the song I'm Sorry. <laughs> Tom invented this word. This he might have. Is, this is his contribution. I, I, I'm not going to check, but I'm almost positive that if you tried to Google the phrase don't bide your time, you would not find any examples of it previous to 1997. Okay, it auto-fills to don't bide your time, Blink-182. Of course. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, Amazing. I like the idea that you're uh, like – um, Google search history is so fucked by this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> oh my god, you wouldn't believe it. Like whenever I search anything now, it just serves me I miss you coverage. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, by search actually by searching this, I just found a cover that wasn't even on my list. Oh, so let's rack them up, man. Helpful. We'll make this episode longer. Let's Hell do yeah. It. In real it. time. Um so this is actually, speaking of time, because I, I want to sort of delve into this before I get more specific to the song, because I was thinking about this. Oh, Yo, hold up, though. Wait, you can't do a segue yet, because oh. I, 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 there's a band called Seconds who right. have a song called Don't Bide Your Time from 2017. Oh, oh I didn't gonna realize forget. you were still in Don't Bide Your Time. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't. Please do not bide. Uh, <laughs> or please do I would bide, love to bide for a little while. Yeah, I'll bide, I'll bide forever, man. Is it like I bide, bide some time? I bide... <laughs> Yeah. Bide you some time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is the band Seconds with Don't Bide Your Time. This is like one of those like high production value music videos that has so many hashtags and like brand partnerships <laughs> on it. Did you hear him singing at the start? Yeah. He was, sang it. <laughs> Slow. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. 
This is like some H and M tropical button up shirt music. <laughs> Can't do it. But, uh, Don't support fast fashion, you guys. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's clear that um, your dedication to just sort of buying your clothes from former Victory Records uh, employees has <laughs> exactly. led you into more serious fashion realms, I think. Then. So, okay, what were you going to say about time? Well, no, it wasn't about time, but I, I just I felt like we were in the process then of sort of moving piece by piece through the song, and I had more of an overarching kind of like... Yeah, I'm not really sure if it's worth going piece by piece, maybe, because it's really... Other than don't bide your time. And maybe that's all you need to do to write something good is you start with a strong line and then just use a bunch of filler. Right, because does anything else here jump out to you at all? Well, there is another funny line, but our guest touches on it later. Oh, so okay, so we got to save that funny line. I'm going to scroll through it real, real quick and try to guess. <laughs> I'm just looking at uh, the Victory Records lineup, and there's a band called Billingsgate, which I think is pretty good. <laughs> You're just trying to jog your own memory right now? <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. Do you think, like, because all those Victory Records bands were, like, so intensely, um, like, corporatized. Um, so do you think, like, there, there's a chance to, like, just buy Billingsgate? You know, like, there are bands like this. Are, <laughs> couldn't you buy Power Man 5000 or one of these things? Like, Yeah, I think Linkin Park had said that they were... Um like running their band like a corporation or something. Yeah, and so at some point and I wrote a really snarky article about it, and then I don't really know what happened to the the band after <laughs> yep. I was mean to them online. I'm not sure what happened, but no. Nope. Um, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. I don't remember. It's good corporate. <laughs> oh yeah, we should go so, in and buy. We should buy Billingsgate. We should. Uh, we should well, see if we can we like, make it. Bill offer. Billingsley should buy the band Billingsgate. That's true. Bill, make this your next <laughs> extravagant purchase, <laughs> and it can be part of the part of the finale. Man, it's really hard to find a specific band. <laughs> Uh, yeah, from, I mean, I went as far as Victory Records bands from Atlanta, and I couldn't do it. So, well, okay, you keep Googling, and I'll sort of tell the story, because it doesn't really matter um, to you, probably. But well, we were a little <laughs> late getting started tonight while we're talking about time, and uh, my, mm-hmm. my mic wasn't working. I had to go back to work to, to get a rig I Because you've been there. now podcasting at work or something? Podcasting everywhere. No, so this was like, this was sort of the thought process, right? So I was like, okay, I left, and I'm like walking t- to work, and, and my work is uh, sort of in the middle of what is like, kind of the club district at this point in Toronto. Um, so even like the entrance that Bloor. I... Bloor. Yeah, Bloor. Bloor Street, Toronto's club district. And like the entrance to get into my office is like under this new club that's just opened called Toy Box, which honestly looks like a club from a movie or like a skit <laughs> about just like shitty clubs for assholes and it's like all neon red and shit. So I have to like go through there to get into the office and pick up the mic and then I like listen to the song and I also like... I was a little bit stoned just because I was like, oh, I'm going to be out for like half an hour and this is sort of annoying. And um, and I'm like listening to this song that I like listened to so intensely in like the eighth grade, sort of walking back to do this podcast about it. And the song is like about all of these sort of the like the themes of the album, but the themes that we sort of keep touching on of like aging and where and just like the sort of utter impossibility of being able to predict the sort of in stupid and entertaining and, and wonderful and terrible places that your life is going to go when these songs first sort of imprint on you. And here I am like looking up at toy box, like getting my fucking podcast <laughs> mic to walk back to my house to talk about being 14 years old for, th- for the next three hours. Did you start crying? And then I just wept, uh, <laughs> and then uh, and then and then we started recording. I'm and still... then you did a quick shift at Toy Box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Went in, <laughs> sort of bounced for a little bit. Um, you know, uh, as a go-go dancer. Yeah, exactly. I bounced. The, the yeah. problem is every Victory Records band has the exact same photo. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's crazy. And they were all that like blue, uh, like a very blue filter, like high contrast, mm-hmm. black and blue. This, this is so upsetting. Is Victory Records even still around? Like, could we get onto Victory Records? Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, apparently um, our guest was trying to sign a podcast to the label he works for. So I think there's it's an idea out there. But I feel like why does anyone sign with Victory Records? It's like the Suge Knight of, um, like, bad mall hardcore. <laughs> I, uh, I got a Victory Records <laughs> t-shirt for free once, like some work thing or like in a swag bag. And, 
and I and I wear it sometimes to like the gym because I think it's like a sick gym shirt because uh, I look like I'm into like tougher bands than I am like you know <laughs> Spitalfield and Thursday. Uh, and, uh, but one time I wore it in like a, this exists video and someone who like, I guess was watching the channel, but kind of young and like not into victory records was like, lol, my brother just walked by while I was watching this video and saw your shirt and then had to like, got so mad and had to explain the entire history of this label. And maybe you shouldn't be wearing that shirt, man. It sounds like the guy's kind of a dick. <laughs> but I was just imagining like someone who's probably our age walking by like their kid brother, like like their stepson watching YouTube and just being like, YouTubers don't know what the fuck <laughs> you're talking about. You do not respect hardcore. <laughs> and I'm up there talking about like Vore. Imagine respecting <laughs> hardcore is the funniest thing ever. Um, the band is not. That's why I got confused. I, it sounds like they w- were not. He moved to Atlanta maybe after they broke up. They're called Meridian mm. is the name of the band. Okay, don't remember so that. So now you know now you know the uh, guy that sold me a jacket in Atlanta, you know, the name of his band that has since been dropped <laughs> from Victory. What an amazing podcast this is. <laughs> Just truly wonderful. Yeah, and you know about the club near my office, too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess, th- do you want to read the whole bridge? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. 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 The thing <laughs> is, I could do that and people would love it. That's how awful this project is. <laughs> right. It's like, I could just like slowly, <laughs> monotonously yeah. read the word. I'm sorry. That should have been the whole episode though. Like it should have just been two hours of you going, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. People would be into it. That's the thing. It's like we're invincible. (laughs) And it's a curse more than anything. It's pretty good. The way Mark delivers the I'm sorry is also very funny because it just feels like too many kind of syllables for like how fast they're playing the song. Like it's a it's it's a it's a very inelegant delivery. And then the this happened to you like doesn't none of it fits perfectly on top of each other in a way that like makes it perfect. Like it's so much better that it's not just like yeah. perfect and shiny. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's such a like nineties <laughs> pop punk type fucking finale to have in your song. The, the way that everything is like trying to be complex, but it's too fast and yeah. messy and, and a disaster. And then also the way it ends with the feedback. I'm actually now convinced that this whole song is a prenup song. <laughs> 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 it like sounds exactly like something I would like write. If you're just describing so, it sort of in the abstract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I think I probably fuck with the song a lot more than I realized. I just was always afraid of that runtime. So that's it. So you're just you're you're afraid. Afraid of afraid of that much commitment. So there's like no genius annotations and there's really not much to dig into but then i thought we haven't done this in a while why don't we take a look at oh, some yeah. of the interpretations on songmeanings.com and i haven't pre-read any of these so i don't really know okay cool um i couldn't so believe the, how few plays it had like i was on like the official blink 182 youtube to just kind of play it again before we yeah started. like and no I was one like what the fuck does this song not get any respect to me this is an iconic d- i know the d- d- ranch song what are we saying now the the drench. The drench. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, man. The drench. The drench. <laughs> right. Okay. The drench. So so yes. This but this song is not like a like a low key fan favorite. It's not at all. In fact, when you search "I'm sorry" on Reddit, that people just talk about. Hey, I'm sorry, I lost the melody. The that fuck? iconic classic we all know and love. People rarely talk about this song. It's considered like a. A forgotten classic that no one cares about, and it's considered like <clears throat> just uh, what's the term like underrated, which is just crazy to me. Like I, f- I'm starting to get worried that Dude Ranch is not as iconic as it should be at this point in time. Well, we've got you know a cu- couple of more Dude Ranch episodes to really help make it happen. You know exactly. But so before we do the lyrics thing, I want to just quickly point out the other horrible thing that happens on Reddit when you search "I'm sorry" is like all these fedora been being like. I'm so. This is the actual caption, and also last week I was making fun of redditors, and one of them's a part of the Pod Nation. But I, I'm brave enough to keep going. Wow, I don't care. you're fearless. <laughs> so this is Cody LZ28, and he's written, "I'm sorry, I had to do this. Great pick. You kick ass, Sir Hoppus, and kick ass is uh, one word." Because that's how dumb this guy is. Right. And it's just like a picture of Mark Hoppus making like a. I would call this a offensive Ricky Gervais face. (laughs) (laughs) But either way, like this epic screenshot is like, Sir Hoppus, 
I'm sorry, I had to do this, Sir Hoppus. And I'm just like, God damn. No wonder Americans don't say sorry. Yeah. Because there's so much else that's wrong up there. So uh, Pie Owens Cake has responded, I forgive you. But all kidding aside, where, when is this? Like, oh, just having a laugh. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like some screenshot from some deep Australian cut. I, I don't know if I should go on the Reddit anymore. It's too upsetting. <laughs> no, it's, it, it's uh, I think it's a good challenge for you. And it keeps you honest in terms of knowing that you're insulting um, like at least some people who are listening to the podcast right now. <laughs> but where I can go that's less um, insulting to my intelligence is the comments on songmeanings.com, mm. most of which have not been updated for at least 10 years, sometimes 17. I just noticed we can filter the comments, actually. There's only one that's listed as my interpretation. Oh. So I'm going to read that one. This is from 2009. This is 10 years old. I kind of feel as if it's about a guy who has to break up with a girl he still loves because she, because he's holding her down and he knows. He tells her he'll still see her around. He tell her he's sorry because he knows she's hurt even though there's no harm. Meaning it's a clean breakup. And he tells the girl he knows she'll find someone else, someone better, thus she'll win again. And then there's an equal sign and a backslash. So whatever that emoji, I only know U- E-U-W-U now. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, here's a comment from uh, an actual member of... Uh, of uh, the Blink-155 Pod Nation MXPX guy. And uh, the, uh, their comment is, uh, the, the first time I heard this song, I started to like it. And I still love this song. Every time I sing it to my little sister, she goes to sleep. Wow. <laughs> Which, little sister is probably MXPX girl, the actual member of the nation. <laughs> right. Wow, I guess people used to think that all the songs were about Scott leaving before they made them all about Tom leaving. <laughs> right. That's, <laughs> uh, That's interesting. I don't know. I guess there's not, I was hoping there'd be like some real brain-breakingly stupid shit. Um, I do like this comment. It's about getting older, in all caps, written like a Sam Sutherland apology <laughs> message. Right. It's about getting older and growing up and moving on and maturing and getting wiser and leaving things behind. Each of those things was its own, like, fresh line return on the on the post. Mm. Maybe it could be about a relationship, but it's not just about that. It reminded me of my friend, so I sent it to her, and she really liked it. I think she got my point. She even sent it to her friend. I love this song. Anywho, I heard it was about going on tour and success and whatnot, but yeah, part of me, part of that doesn't make sense to me, but it kind of does. <laughs> like, why did why did the internet get invented? What's the that still goes on for so long. Well, I mean, I think it was invented so we would eventually have this podcast to create this platform for all these great interpretations, like Lil Punker Girl D, uh, who says it's about Tom's friend Adam that died. Everyone thought that nothing could happen to him. He was unstoppable. He had a lot going for him, but it was cut short by a drunk driver on a curvy road. (laughs) But you have to get over it and go on with life. It's hard to see a loved one in Uwain and then leave. I think Katie meant pain, but so this is the real Adam song. And the apple juice that was spilled was actually booze because there was oh, drunk driving going on. Yeah, it's the other yellow liquid. <laughs> Damn. Um, I just want to give you a little update. You mentioned MXPX guy earlier. Well, Loser Dude 45 on August 13th, 2002 said, Hi, everybody. It's me, MXPX guy. I changed my scene name because someone changed my password, and I had no chose to change my scene name. If you want to email me, go ahead at, and I want everyone to write this down, O M M I two thousand two at AOL dot com. <laughs> Thank you very much. Blink one eighty two kicks ass. Hi Reagan. Um, Reagan's a different person, I think, because MXPX guy has also said that, that Reagan is sweet in here. So do you, um Do you yeah. think these comments are just so old that they're like pro Ronald Reagan posts? Like this is a a, a deeply Republican <laughs> It could be, yeah. This <laughs> forum. is from, This is from uh, whenever Ronald Reagan was around. I don't I I'm going to – we all know, so let's not <laughs> yeah, bother let's not saying the specifics. The yeah. <laughs> one, that, one thing that was funny to return to an earlier point about how no one respects the song Sorry, and I'm Sorry, is that this person has made a Reddit post saying, why do you blink keep being sorry, referencing all these songs that have sorry in the lyrics. 
And I was going to say that I'm sorry is not in there, but it is. So let's just forget this point altogether. God damn. But in the comments, someone has said that they're secretly Canadian from this. Oh, how about the record label, then, Secretly Canadian? Yeah, well, that's the thing. They've written even in title case, Secretly Canadian. Then someone wrote, sounds like a Blink song title. But I think none of them know about secret, Secretly Canadian. Yeah, no one here is talking about Secretly Canadian. <clears throat> Look... I might sound a little flustered, and it's because there's about 300 notifications right now. <laughs> and it's because the teens have not gone. When do these fucking teens go to bed? They've, like, don't the teens have to study? Aren't they Harvard teens? Cla- Claudia and Sandra, <laughs> is that right? I can't re- I remember I pronounced it wrong. You got ro- They're just endlessly roasting us, these Blink-182 <laughs> Confessions teens. I guess <laughs> we've invited some teens into our house. By these, like, 16-year-olds. <laughs> it's crazy. But... In the spirit of um, fraternity and sorority, I'm speaking, of <laughs> course, of future Harvard, your future fellow Harvard alums. Yes, yes. Because um, they're going to Harvard summer school and you went to Harvard online. Both of those things are, I would say, I mean, impressive, but like no one's going to jail for bribing you into that. You know what <laughs> right, I mean? Yeah, it's impressive with an asterisk. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. So I thought, you know what, since there's all these Harvard people in the nation... I think it's just if you are involved with this band and this podcast, you just are so smart. You inevitably have a turn at Harvard. <laughs> right. Well, that's um, that's the power you get if you listen to all the episodes and can recite the names of all of the characters that existed <laughs> for like five <laughs> seconds in Josiah's mind. <laughs> exactly. Um, so in my searches, I found this uh, this fairly recent. Yeah. Like within the time of the pod existing, I think we definitely have something to do with this. Um, there's a review of Dude Ranch in the Harvard Crimson, which, like, being snooty and fake smart about Dude Ranch is extremely my shit. And I would argue that I helped uh, <laughs> pioneer this movement <laughs> of faux, faux academia about Dude Ranch. But anyways, this this motherfucker named Edward M. Litwin, the, the Crimson staff writer... Um, and his last name is Lit and Win put together. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet if someone said either that those words to him alone, his monocle would fall out probably. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> the, the, the fact that there is a Harvard Crimson review of Dude Ranch, though, since the pod existing, I, I am inclined to believe that those things have to be connected. And, and, I, and I have to hope that if Lizzo were to see this review, she would be able to admit that music journalism is actually very important <laughs> and good. Oh, don't, come on. Don't <laughs> do start the Lizzo thing. And then today, Ariana Grande was dunking on bloggers. <laughs> yeah. And it's like. It's so good. It's, it's tough because they're both completely correct. But also wrong. Well, that's, so it's like yeah, those things can be true. Like Lizzo's right, but also the thing is, oh man. But like, like Ruia, who wrote the Lizzo review for Pitchfork, is an incredible writer. So I mean, no one reads the Pitchfork review. So. I yeah, I mean, I read it after <laughs> Lizzo was mad about it, and I was like, this is a well written review. This is interesting. Um, well, um, but Eddie, <laughs> we're not talking about Lizzo. We're talking about Litwin, my boy Eddie, <laughs> right. writing for the Harvard Crimson. Eddie Litwin, I mean, damn, what a name, bro! <laughs> <laughs> so this is called Dude Ranch when Sad Boy went punk, and he really does this sort of like this pairing of sort of like a little bit snooty writing with things like writing the term nice guy with a in title case with the trademark symbol beside it. So he's like he's trying to show that he's like. He he's playing both sides, you know. Mm. He can hit the books, but he can also hit the uh, menchies, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> he's menchie smart too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's tweet smart. <laughs> <laughs> so he says here, uh, early Blink One Eight Two could most effectively be characterized as the Captain Underpants of bands. Everything they did f- felt a little like a dirty joke. What a fucking nerd. But anyways, um, I thought Which it was I interesting. Which I would never laugh at. Like, that's <laughs> right. Guy. The the very last paragraph, the last two paragraphs I thought were pretty good. But first, before we get there, um, he actually doesn't like I'm Sorry. And he says that there's moments that – so he says DeLong's voice is notoriously nasally. Yeah. Which I always get corrected by my editor whenever I say nasally because he says that it should just be nasal. Not nasally. Here's, here's a question. Who do you think is, uh, like, 
I guess, better at editing? The editor of Exclaim or the editor of the Harvard Crimson? Who do we trust here? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. And also... But I'm inclined to agree you... with Exclaim. But who do you think is least deserving of a job? The person who <laughs> does almost anything else or the person who debates whether or not you should call Tom DeLonge's voice nasally? Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> Maybe no one. Uh, but anyway. Lizzo is right. Let's just agree. <laughs> I don't know. I like nasally because he's not actually specifically singing through his nose. It just sounds like he is. So nasally makes more sense. Yeah, that's true. Nasal is too literal. Maybe that's that's the thing. Is a voice it like unless he was – I don't even know how to, I was going to try to do it, but I was like, can't. I feel like I <laughs> just get snot You're already doing it. You gotta, you, you're sick. I know. Um, okay, so DeLong's voice is notoriously nasally, and while it works most of the time, there are moments it's ex- especially grating, like on the closer I'm Sorry, where it sounds like nails on a chalkboard. <sighs> God damn, dude. Yeah, more like Eddie not lit. Lost. <laughs> yeah, lose. <laughs> 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 Fail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then, so this is how it closes, though. Hoppus acts as a far more serious protagonist. His songs feature the central figure seeking something more from those around him and becoming frustrated when they or he inevitably falls short of his expectations. There's a gradual realization, however, that what he wants is a girlfriend who will put up with his mediocre self. The climax of this realization is on Josie, in which Hoppus literally describes his ideal girlfriend. Dude Ranch is all about the realization of this entitlement, as the album builds to an epiphany that the protagonist is a bad person. It's a narrative that sounds murky and toxic, but one that Blink-182 mostly pulls off through the brightness and hookiness of DeLong's guitar work. By keeping everything lyrically simple, Blink-182 is able to be catchy despite their darker material. And there's a few digs at some uh, bad songs. But ultimately, they say, while the sound has become tremendously influential, no band since has been able to make the nice guy, title case, so likable. For all the accomplishments the band had, this one may be the most impressive. So, Edward, in the end, you really did have a lit win. (laughs) I got to say, I agree with this tweet that I found while trying to find... Edward uh, Litwin's own Twitter from uh, the Harvard Crimson art section, which is simply, uh, this is the entirety of the tweet, Edward M. Litwin. So I agree with the Harvard Crimson arts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to go ahead and cancel Harvard or cancel Litwin right now with this article and photo combination. Um, and this is from the oh, column no, called. Oh, no, no. <laughs> this is from. This is from <laughs> No. This is from the column called Arts Vanity, a touch of levity uh, in the Harvard Crimson. And the, no. the headline is, real music is dead and you killed it. And Harvard is like, I mean, I keep calling him Harvard. <laughs> Litwin is sitting back in the chair doing like the thinking emoji face and he's wearing a Scooby-Doo t-shirt. And I have never wanted to pants someone in the quad. Oh, no. He needs to be hit with a bra bomb immediately. <laughs> Uh, last week at a party, I submitted to the disc jockey a daring request. I inquired <laughs> if he had the fortitude to play Lou Bega's Mambo Number no. 5. Ugh. Oh, I think this is about being an epic latrol. Because he says the <laughs> DJ plebishly replied that the kids don't dance to that kind of stuff. And then he played LCD sound system and said... And the sheeple ate it up. I think he's trying to be like an uh, epic latrol... Le- Litwin. Litwin. Anyways, Harvard, I think, should be discredited as an organization. I believe this is this is a scandal that will rock them. To the, this is bigger <laughs> than just like a, the admission scandal. So, Sam, I really did want to talk to you quite a bit about um, <laughs> dogs drinking piss. <laughs> Good. I was just over here like, I just wanted to talk to you a lot. And I'm glad that we're doing it <laughs> every yeah, week well, for the too. rest of our lives. It's weird because when he was doing the research uh, for this episode, he his cat was drinking his piss, um, and then it was the same as the sketch on here. So I thought we should talk about the piss drinking sketch, right? Just like an organic connection of, of just <laughs> yeah. animals drinking yeah. piss. Yeah. So um, does Woody? Ever... I mean, first of all, okay. <laughs> first of all, yeah. What do you think of the sketch? The sketch goes on so much longer <laughs> than I remembered it. So earlier I was describing having this sort of like, just sort of like, tip, tip, not, not in, at least not entirely atypical, um, sort of like nostalgic, um, kind of falling down this nostalgic wormhole, listening to the song, walking back here to do the pod. 
and just like you know, just 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 all in my head, just just tapping into the feelings that the song evokes, and then letting that that feedback kind of play out, and and that and that also like even just that sound being like, oh my god, that sound like reminds me of something, and then like being like, oh right, the skit. And then just, like, how long the dog laps for. <laughs> yeah. It, it, I mean, Mark did piss a lot, though. To be fair, I mean, uh, uh, so many brewskis or whatever he says. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wonder what kind of beer Mark was drinking back then. Oh, I would love to know. Because this is, like, Sigmark era. So he's smoking, he's drinking. It's Sigmark. It's, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just tried to Googling Blink-182 with beer, but then it just shows, like, a bunch of fucking breweries who did their, like, Oh, Mark Hoppy IPA or whatever. <laughs> like, get out of here, you fucking nerds. <laughs> I'm so sad for the person who listens to this pod who absolutely has a home brewing kit and has been getting ready to send us <laughs> Mark Hoppy as, like, a <laughs> gift. Um, um, yeah, I think, like, this is pre-PBR, but he would have been drinking something really shitty. Yeah, for sure. This this era, this is, like, a sh- this shitty beer time in your life. But, like... And it's not pre-PBR, I know, but, like, I, I just doubt he was... I don't think PBR was uh, on their marketing game yet. Yeah, that shit. it was, like, actually a working working. I'm, like, more beer. scared to say the wrong thing about beer than anything else. <laughs> some fucking... Punisher. It's going to be so much worse the talking shit on like <laughs> the potential origins of a Montreal uh, crust band. So, uh, which I had to explain to someone from Montreal today. They were like, "Why are you?" I was like, "Tell me about trying to explain something about the pod to someone." And they're like, "Wait, yeah. Nepsi is on your pod?" And I was like, "No, we just been talking about them for a month." <laughs> so dumb. But I thought the skit was going to be more like one of the other skits on the album. Which is like a very short kind of one too. Like I was like, I couldn't rem- I couldn't remember what the dog was licking. To be honest, I was like, does the dog suck Mark's dick? Like I, I couldn't because I I, wow. I have not listened to that's this something I didn't Google. But could a dog suck a dick? Because I don't feel like their mouth doesn't really go that way. It's more of a snapping up and down motion, <laughs> right? Yeah. Do dogs? You mostly see dogs chewing as opposed to sucking. And lick it. Yeah, or perhaps, like, it, yeah, he would put, like, peanut butter on his dick. I'm, I'm sure that, I mean, that's happened a million times throughout pop culture. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you're right. It's way too long. It's really annoying. Um, and I found, but we're not going to talk about it fully today, but I found that there's a, on a promo version of the CD, there's a bonus track that comes even after that that's called well, people call it dog lapping, but I think the dog lapping is clearly the dog lapping up piss. But people have said that this bonus track is called dog lapping, so I'm like, fuck, is there a song we haven't done yet? But it's actually an alternate version of the country song, which is like a terrible joke song that they did that is on our list. So we're going to have to do this like horrible <laughs> 30 second. There's still more awful joke songs in our midst, which is kind of encouraging because as we like look at the Dude Ranch uh, track listing, we're like, damn, there's not that many songs left. It is comforting to know that there's still a lot of bullshit that we have to talk about. <laughs> right. what, what a comforting thought. <laughs> so, but I, I, so I did. I wanted to. But I was oh, getting, sorry, So ahead. on Apple Music, it is listed as I'm sorry slash dog lapping, but it doesn't have the country song. It's just the dog lapping. So there's no like banter with Mark and Tom at the end, no, right? No, it's just uh, it's just it's just so the, okay. So they do. Call, have. I see. Yeah. So they do. Okay. So just. Once again, the people of the internet are fools. Well, and they do not have the intellect of me and my good friend Edward Litwin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just not quite the distinguished gentleman. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, I did want to look up like how often are dogs drinking human piss. Okay, that um, seems So important. I do have some stuff we can read on that subject from another source of um, expertise and knowledge, the website Qu- Quora. Oh, yeah. I love to get com. answers from Quora.com. How did they make a worse Yahoo Answers, which is already the worst place on earth? Because Yahoo Answers was more consistently like fucked up. Maybe by virtue of the fact that people were, po- I think people obviously posted fake questions, but it felt like Yahoo Answers was way more just like, you know, like I, I got pregnant through the belly button type, you know, weird shit where you're like, right. I don't know, what? Who the fuck is? Whereas like Quora is just so dumb. Like it's not even like funny or. Yeah. And also like I feel like everyone who answers, is libertarian on it. I always get that vibe. <laughs> right. And also, like, I feel like I, I wanted to look at Quora once, 
and I put in my email address like 10 years ago on Quora, and now I get so many emails, and I feel like they own all my information. <laughs> right. Like, Quora, I feel like, is a virus, actually. Yeah, you actually have written a lot of these answers because you were, like, c- c- compelled to. Or <laughs> it was, like, a compulsory well, even, like, service. <laughs> even the first answer on here is from someone named Dacell, D-A-C-E-L-L-E, Dacell Peckler. Like, that's not a real name, first no. of all. Second of all, they're from Walnut Grove, which is a suburb of Langley. So shout out Langley, um, Walnut Grove. Uh, Shout out Walnut Grove for the few (laughs) Langley listeners. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone visit Walnut Grove sometime. You'll love it. (laughs) Go to to Colossus. Um, That's where I used to work at the Save on Foods, where I wrote with permanent marker on the board to quit. (laughs) Remember that? Oh, yeah. So shout out Walnut Grove. That's great. Um, Okay. So someone asks... Is it dangerous for my dog to drink my urine? Oh, man. And, and Dassel Peckler answered, <clears throat> male intact dogs. Now, first of all, what does that mean? Uh, intact it dogs. means they still, that... have, um, they still have their balls. Oh, not like it's a living dog. Like it hasn't <laughs> yeah, been yeah, yeah, yeah. destroyed. Yes, it hasn't been just <laughs> torn apart. <laughs> <laughs> Male intact dogs often sample other dogs' urine to check for hormones, sickness, among other things. We use urine in hunting culture to attract meals from the area and to mask our own smell. Female intact dogs may do this to a lesser extent. If an altered dog is is sample in your urine, I would recommend that you go to the doctor and have your urine checked out to make sure you're not becoming a diabetic, oh. have an infection, or something else go- going on. It is not normal for your dog to be in an area where you urinate in most cases. So that's the other thing, right? It's like kind of weird that your dog would be there when you're urinating. So she's saying, like, unless you're on a farm it's not a great idea to be pissing near your dog but it's also cool she later says we have taught dogs in the medical world to detect urinary tract infections detect heat in cattle to sniff out diabetics etc huh that's why this is why i recommend if this is a new behavior that you go get yourself checked out good luck so that's kind of cool wow maybe the dog was just concerned that mark had a uti <laughs> and had been washing the smegma from his dick enough if only Dissel peckler had been like an engineer <laughs> on on dude ranch <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of yeah, the, the other like, dis- the peckler was a lot nicer than these other people are getting very angry that this person is letting their I mean Victoria Hibbard which is the ultimate dog owner name said I don't know why you would allow your dog to drink it first off if you're camping or using the bathroom outside and he happens to drink it because he's attracted to the salts in it I don't think it would endanger him but it's not something that should happen habitually especially if you take medicine medication or drink alcohol I guess that's true too right yeah, if you do, if you let your dog drink your urine, I suggest you might consider taking your dog to a no-kill shelter and surrendering it, <laughs> <laughs> or take the owner. Yeah, even better. That's from Mark um, Beardsley, who has a BA in computer science and business. <laughs> <laughs> well, Victoria also added, if so, this is specifically to this: if your dog is drinking your urine from the toilet bowl, put a stop to this immediately, especially if you use a drop-in toilet cleaner. But even if you don't, cleaners leave residual films that are toxic to your pet, and bacteria in toilet bowls can also cause illness. So in this situation, she already said if you're drinking alcohol, the dog's going to be drinking it. I mean, that's actually just quite funny to imagine a dog getting oh, drunk yeah. from Mark Hoppus's piss. <laughs> yeah. Now, I guess the remaining question is, like, how clean was Mark Trombino's toilet? Because that's where this took right, place. That's, yeah, that's concerned. But the idea of, like, a piss-drunk dog wandering around the recording of Dude Ranch is kind of charming. <laughs> yeah, like, if anything, that makes the album a hundred times better. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Just knowing that that um, was the energy in the room. I did Don't actually do your co- co- time. Just <laughs> <laughs> I did quite a lot of research on this topic, so I have another website um, to check, did. which is wagwalking.com. And this one's more about, and there is a, a pop-up ad to become a dog walker, and I might consider that later. But, um, <laughs> And there's a countdown clock to book a free walk? What? What if I just booked a dog walk, but like <laughs> they showed up and they're like, I don't have a dog. Can we just go for a walk? <laughs> yeah, I just, I just need a friend. So the thing that I found really interesting about this, and I don't know too much about dog culture because it's, it's just a little bit foreign to me. I haven't had a dog in a long time. Um, and it seems quite insane and too far and like culty in my mind dog ownership yeah just like dog culture in general is just like calm the fuck down everyone yeah i mean Um, i remember having this conversation over um maybe the holidays at some point with like talking about sort of 
dogs replacing kids for like, I think a lot of people in our generation and, um, and, and, you know, be like, oh, I think people have always kind of used it as training wheels. And I was like, but did you ever like, do you think our parents' generation, there's a lot wrong with like the boomers and stuff, not our individual parents, but as a whole, it's, it's bad. But like, <laughs> it's so a buster from Arrested Development <laughs> right. that you need to put that caveat. I, in there. I love Mother, but um, <laughs> 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 the, just the idea that like, I don't think anyone in our parents' generation called themselves like doggy mummies and daddies. You know, (laughs) like I feel like that's a very present affliction. So on this on this website, wagwalking.com, the article that is written in like psycho cartoon (laughs) font is called Can Dogs Smell Human Urine? And that's exactly that. What you just said is is exactly what I thought when I read the first sentence was, do you have a dog that loves to sniff pee mail? And so they call like piss P-mail because it's like a message that your dog is receiving where they can sort of what s- no that's suck not, it all that's, in. That's not what that that's, absolutely it is that because th- for some reason they don't define. They assume that we all know what they're talking about, um, and then later on at some point, well, they for some reason they talk about an old fashioned cathode ray TV set compared to a modern HD TV. I like this article. Jesus Christ. Um, there's a lot of a lot of things I can dig into. Somewhere in here, they define the the P email thing. Yeah, there we go. So this is how it ends. Finally, as they get right on top of the smell of human pee, the dog may, and I don't know this word, flemen? No, I don't know. You know this word? No, I do not. It's like some fucking psycho dog owner word, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is some doggy daddy shit. Oh, bare upper teeth. Okay, it's when an animal bears an oh. upper teeth. So I'm just going to say that because someone's already making fun of me for not pronouncing it right. <laughs> Finally, as they get right on top of the smell of human pee, the dog may bare their upper teeth. This is where they lift the lip to expose special scent receptors in the vulmer nasal gland. Nasally. These add detail to the scent picture and are the equivalent of opening up a message in their email or P-mail inbox to read the detail. Oh, my God. So, so P mail is a thing that people say. Well, these people um, like are they? Do you think this is like a wag walking phrase? If they just tried to like make make it a thing, it's definitely there's P mail dot com. Um, there's a whole bunch of P mail shit. Uh, this P mail dot com seems very upsetting, and it's trying to load my flash player. Um, and it says tickle types. <laughs> tickle types. Don't think P-mail I should. P mail milky <laughs> elephant. That one. <laughs> I don't think I should be opening that website. Um, <laughs> Yeah, people say P-mail, and so in general, I think what we can glean from this is that the dog that was scampering around Mark Trombino's studio was, A, looking for a buzz and wanted some of that sweet pre-PBR cheap punk beer. <laughs> yeah. B, wanted to not only sniff the P-mail, so to speak, and Fleming its teeth, but then once it sniffed the P-mail... Wanted to taste and wanted to know. And I think maybe Mark had like a UTI or maybe a venereal. Maybe he was di- just diabetic. Some, something going yeah, on. Who knows? Yeah, but something, something. But you think it's something more dick related? I mean, I guess not. I guess all kinds of things pass through the urinary tract, not just dick things. <laughs> so maybe there were, yeah, maybe, maybe he had had asparagus. Yeah. You never know. Ooh. It's kind of cool though. So if a dog is ever trying to suck your dick, you might be sick. <laughs> <laughs> what we've learned. That's the classic <laughs> rhyme that ke- has kept people safe <laughs> for 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 so many centuries. <laughs> so uh, another incredible thing that I found, I was like, maybe somebody did the sketch, like reenacted it or something. This is not that, <laughs> but this is my favorite thing I've ever. One of my favorite things I've seen in a long time. Um, this is just the song All the Small Things, but it's someone's final class project for film school. So this is entitled FTS002 Intro to Film Studies Final Project oh. for 2912 oh. for Mr. Ferguson's class section B. Um, this is uploaded by Mr. Entertainment. Yeah. It has like a very ironic thing. Like I'm I'm just wondering if this is fake or not. This is to- this has got to be fake. Oh, it's so good. It's so it's from 2012, but it's like it's just all the small things. With edited shots of dogs <laughs> shitting. But in reverse. <laughs> so it's shit going back into the asses of dogs. Oh, yeah, you're right. I didn't notice <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's. Oh, just especially shit going the wet diarrhea. Dogs. Yeah, the diarrhea. The is. wet diarrhea going back in is insane. <laughs> it's like slow motion, some of it as well. It's. Uh, oh. 
Damn. Do you th- I wonder how they did on their test. <laughs> Have they offered any... Uh, uh, there, hasn't, there hasn't been any sort of update from the user in terms of what their grade was, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if this is real. They've they've posted some come town content and whatnot. I think they're very. This is a very online person. Yeah, but, this um, this person is, I think, doing doing irony. But I think still, I mean, either way, what, if you submitted this, congrats. If not, still, thank you for your service. Um, and I'm glad that it's backwards because the next thing I wrote down was just like this is so stupid, but it's actually kind of interesting. Somebody somebody just uploaded the whole track backwards, and the dog sketch being at the start makes it sound very lynchy. Oh, sick. Yeah, it's literally like, <laughs> got a light? <laughs> <laughs> Wait till he talks. Got a light? I read that. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, he's got a light. 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 He's got a and also, even just hearing how much Mark is emoting that joke, yeah, I feel like he's quite dead inside now. <laughs> it's true. He's selling that joke. And I cannot, yeah. I can't imagine him selling anything. Like, I don't think he believes any of his Twitter jokes the way that he believes that piss drinking dog <laughs> sketch. Exactly. I'm um, skipping ahead a little bit because also the riffs sound really crazy backwards. <laughs> Just like start a sick rip off '90s pop punk band by playing all the riffs. Backwards. <laughs> totally, there's a whole world of riffs out there waiting for an enterprising young band to discover. <laughs> Could you get in trouble for that? Like, if you just based all your songs on reverse Blink riffs, like, I don't think anyone would ever figure it out. No, but I mean, if you said that you were doing it, <laughs> you know what I mean? If you just were well, like, that's the thing is like we're on like one level of being OCD with everything we do, but there could be a next level where someone actually finds riffs that have been stolen. I mean, throughout NFC gate, I alluded to the fact that I've heard that tragedy have stolen no effects riffs. And I think it makes perfect sense. I think you could probably find it. And I think it would be genius to do. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe if you did the same genre, it would be a problem, but even if you just need like, in riff riff spo. Yeah, yeah. Just like play it backwards. If you're just Steve McBeaning it in the shed, just <laughs> smoking dubs and ripping tunes, like trying to find that <laughs> that sweet riff. You know, oh, I regret I regret so many things so quickly. <laughs> do you in that do one you, moment? Do you think that the skit, even though it's bad, kind of rules just for existing where it does on the yeah. album? Yeah. I hate to I hate to repeat myself, um, so you're gonna hear me say this again later. But I do think that this, and now to be a true Punisher, this is a skit. But what they do on SNL is a sketch, right? I'm pretty sure. Right. A skit is like a dumb thing on an album that everyone hates. But then, <laughs> but a sketch is a dumb when, thing on television that everyone, on TV hates. that everyone hates. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but I do think that this is the perfect sort of representation of their closed off toxic masculinity where they're opening up too much and being too emotive and expressing themselves totally. too much that they have to shut it down immediately. It has to be and honestly, yeah. honestly, that specific tenet of toxic masculinity kind of rocks. <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah, Adam Sandler's entire career is sick and it's because he does he's like a sweet, sensitive, innocent man who really doesn't want to express that ever. <laughs> totally. You know, <laughs> I think I think it's important for us to um dismantle um the 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 parts of our world that have been sort of um held up by, by like the, the sort of tenets of, of, of toxic masculinity. But at the same time, we should not right. throw the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> yeah, the baby being the uh, 29-year-old e-boy skater guy who 
still lives with his parents. Yeah. I mean, he's still, he still is entertaining somewhat. Yeah, so let's not throw him out, okay? <laughs> that particular baby. <laughs> I'm just saying, who will dismantle the dismantlers? Oh, shit. That's deep, man. <laughs> um, okay, so before we get into covers, something has happened. Um, is it the teens? Is the teens... <laughs> Oh, my God. I had to close that tab because it's just <laughs> fucking out of control. I, I feel like the nation is, as they say, on one right now. <laughs> right. It's like everyone's out of control today. There's weird energy. On. Like, we talked about when I was like, ah, my, like, none of my shit's working. I'll be, like, half an hour if I go back to the office or we could do it tomorrow. And you were like, I kind of want – it sounds like a pain in the ass, but I kind of, like, am stoked to do it tonight. And I was like, no, I kind of feel the same way. So <laughs> yeah, there's – uh, yeah, there's a weird energy uh, out in the streets. There's, uh, there's pod vibes going on. But anyways, so um, there's two songs that I found that are called I'm Sorry that are clearly inspired by Blink-182 but are not covers or anything. Um, and this one, this first one seems like it's definitely also accidentally inspired by the pint in the page. Man. Um, <laughs> because the name of this artist is artist and the author. Hell yes. Um, how could you not say that in like a Bono voice? It's very artist Bono. and the author. Although it just makes um, me think like, this is sort of the same as, uh, like there's a fest band we played once where I like, or like a, just a fest type band and I wanted to make fun of it, but I was like, this sounds like a band where I know someone. And then later on I was DM and someone was like, yeah, you're friends with the drummer. And I was like, sick, cool. <laughs> and like artist and the author sounds like the like solo project bands of everyone I went to college with. Um, yeah. And, and probably you also. Oh yeah. 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 hundred <laughs> percent. Art. I like how it's not the artist and the author. It's Artist and the author. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's well, um, this artist and the author ass motherfucker is from Colorado. Oh, so okay, I don't know sick. Great. You probably don't know anyone from there, do you? Never even been. Yeah. Fuck that state. Although you, you do puff the doobies, which they also have there. <laughs> That's true. From, we share that. In those are legal. Yeah, they got so <laughs> legal D's. Maybe you've met them on a trip before. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I've been like cloud bursting, we've uh, we've connected for sure. So this okay, so this is artist and the author. The album is inspiration and dedication. Um, <laughs> it's a class, and this classic song, Colorado accent that we all know and love. <laughs> this song is called "I'm Sorry Blink Tribute." I guess it could maybe not be a Blink One Eight Two tribute, but it sounds like the artist or sorry artist and the author is trying to do a Blink thing. Wait, so, but it's I don't know. but it's a it's a tribute. Not a not a yeah, cover. It's not a cover. Yeah, like it's like a an audio cum tribute, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what it sounds like. Oh, it's fucking silent. These tears from my eyes fall over. These thoughts on my mind make me crazy. This hole in my heart bleeds forever. I fall. Get right? <laughs> like, I, I was like literally I swear to you I was literally like my I was mouth breathing and like off in space just watching the band camp thing move okay, while cool. I was playing I was like so gone <laughs> I think I was like just like really being moved by that song by artist and the author. Maybe I I wasn't allowing myself to be sort of like fully immersed. You're just so closed off because of toxic masculinity. <laughs> well, and also because like I just had the, the I was closing tabs because you'd been sending me a bunch of things. I was like, oh, I just want to get these things closed, and uh, and so I but I got distracted by all these 
animals f- flemming because I had also Googled the word when you got stuck on it. And so this was just like open as I was like, close, 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 close. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, there's a, is that a moose? I, I don't know. Or is it? So Canadian of you. Um, right. But that did kind of sound like, I think, um, this awkward Tyler silence makes, makes me crazy. crazy. Yeah. It also sounded What's a bit that? like uh, Darius. Yeah, but like maybe, I mean, more serious than Darius, but that's not an insult towards Darius, whom I love. No, no, no. Yeah, it was. But if you told me like, now you, we actually know this person for all their for all their jokes and japes. Yeah, but now they're being an artist and the author. Wow, interesting. Um, w- w- the- yeah, I don't know. It's clearly. I mean, it was definitely a tribute to Blank. I'll I'll give you that. But like, it sounded as if they had recorded it through a single mic. Like it was just like a guitar and a person singing. But then as it moved on, there was like that weird kind of like flange effect on the guitar. Like yeah. There was some more no, I mean. So, you know that once you you it is possible to do one take live and then still add overdubs if you want. I don't know. I mean that's just like a little thing I know from the bit. <laughs> I don't know that that's possible. It's like you do it, <laughs> and that's it, and then that's and that's it forever. It's weird though if you're doing a blank tribute, like just change it a little bit so it doesn't sound like a cover, and then get really confusing. Yeah. And also the I think it was a chorus. It said something like I forgive you and you don't really hear that in a song very often. And it sounds actually weird. <laughs> it's like something you should do but don't sing it. Right. You know? Yeah, just like keep that in your private life. <laughs> so this one is even weirder because this person has 182 in their name. Um but it's not a cover of I'm sorry by Blink-182. Wait, yeah, wait. By the way, how did you find the video that's just the dogs shitting backwards to all the small things? <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> I just <laughs> I'm telling you, it's there's pod magic in okay. here. It's a, it, there's no words that say I'm sorry or blink <laughs> in any of that. I know. It's really fucked. Um, I do think, actually, I Miss You stuff is coming up because of the I'm. Like, <laughs> right. Google's thinking, turning I'm into I'm Miss. Okay, I get maybe. it. Maybe. Okay. I don't know. I mean, stop attacking me, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay, so... How do people say it in other places, like in Britain? How do they say it in Australia? Uh, oh, I'm so... 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 <laughs> sorry. Oh. <laughs> For, wow, wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A little rumble. Um, so this person's name is Mind182. They've got a song called I'm Sorry featuring Jonathan Levant. And this has 126,000... Plays on SoundCloud. Damn. This is not. This person's not fucking around. But it, like, this should clearly be a Blink One Eighty Two cover. It's. I mean, all of the signposts are there for for us to. You can't move put One Eighty Two in your name. Yeah. Like it. It makes no sense. So here we go. I'm sorry. Straightforward cover of the song. Yeah, no, if anything that's a, too straightforward. Yeah, I don't know. Just like put your own thing on it. That's fine. Just <laughs> I get it. <laughs> but that's just no, that sounded pretty sick, though. I hope that person gets famous so that there's another 182 in pop culture. <laughs> do you think that the world could handle it? Like, do you think that if that person blew up, we would accept that as a society? Not like, like you and I. I think it's like gonna. I mean. I mean, I don't know. I feel like you're pretty close-minded, but I'll accept anything <laughs> right. that happens. We've established that. That's no canon on the on the internet right now. <laughs> um, that person is like they're popping off. Like they've got quite a few followers on everything. There's a lot of downloads and everything. So I think there's going to be another 182. And now I'm afraid that if we don't preserve our white male cultural heritage <laughs> of Blink 182, then right. Mind 182 is going to take take over. 
And now I'm starting to understand some things I didn't understand before. <laughs> this is, uh, I like that Mind 182 is going to be the thing that radicalizes you. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was fine. It was like, first they came for, you know, the Confederate statues, and I said nothing because I was not a Confederate statue. Uh, right. <laughs> I don't know where to continue that riff to, but you get it. It's a classic. Yeah, it would have been good. I do get it. I always thought that you were a Confederate statue. <laughs> right, yeah. Few people realize. Um, <laughs> it's really awful it's, uh, banter it's, right It's now. awful, yeah. It's really not going uh, very well. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Do you want to talk about some covers or what? I do. Yeah, totally. Do you I have? I don't co- believe you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, is that the best you got? Okay. I hate. I hate when people do oh, that. What was it? They were like, um, I was just. If, if they don't make it big, though, what was the last big number band? Oh, yeah. Well, I guess we may as well fucking say so that people can stop sending it to me. Every person on Earth sends it to me nonstop. And you know what? Keep sending it to me if you want. But the CNN thing about how Blink-182 is the most common right. band name password. Um, so I guess they must be the most famous number band. They are. But, like, what was the last time there was a famous number band? Well, like, does it count if it's, like, the 1975? No. I don't think that counts. That's not a number. That's not like a true like we had a copyright it's not, it's problem. A year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man, I don't like, know. It was like some forty one. Remember SR seventy one? That dude's like still a big pop songwriter. There was um, Delirious, the worship band who spelled it with a five and a oh, question mark right. for some reason. Uh, pre- so that was that was one. Preview seventy three, right? Like that was, that was like ten years ago. Oh yeah, preview. But that's still a year. I feel like. I feel was like, it a um, year? Is it seventy three a year? Is that what that's supposed to be? Yeah, I think because it's I think it's reference to pre fusion, pre pre jazz rock fusion. Oh, I damn music journalism, eh? That not was joke <laughs> yeah, was not Lizzo. a joke earlier, right? Eh? Yeah, Lizzo. <laughs> Twenty one pilots. I don't know. That doesn't, that doesn't really count. count yeah. Maroon Five is kind of interesting because there's not five of them. <laughs> there's like. I don't know, one or seven. There's or only something. one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's only one, Adam. Uh, I don't ben know, there's Folds, not very ben many. Pulse Five is a great number band. I also kind of feel like Blink 182 is the only band who truly got away with it. I still think Sum 41 is a little bit of a corny band name. Yeah. Blink 182 launched this thing where you take a noun and then put an arbitrary number beside it that has become the sole. Property of Battle of the Bands bands. Yeah, it's like when he's the only band to get away with it, and Sum Forty One still seems like a battle. Did you see the new Sum Forty One album cover from today? No. It, How it's, Battle of the Bands they, is it? It is so Battle of the Bands, and it is so like somehow off budget. Ed Hardy. <laughs> it's like crazy. Sick. Look at what I just sent Whoa. you. I mean, <laughs> it's like insane. That's not good, man. Yeah, it's really not good. Um, Imagine they getting that back. With the pod. Say it again. Sorry. They should have consulted with I the know, pod. We, I mean, we've, had, we've been such out. an integral part of Sum 41's. Sum 41, in a lot of ways, is the original in Epsi, <laughs> um, in that we meddled in their very existence <laughs> in a damaging way. And also because I think that you could take an old photo of Sum 41 and slap the in Epsi logo on it, and it would work, <laughs> and people would get really mad, and I was already thinking of doing that, so please remind me to do that, and I will. It's gotta, yeah, you got to do that with the episode Friday. <laughs> Yeah, like this is just one of those things where I can imagine describing this like being, uh, you know, in a band being like, I got this idea. So it's like uh, a skull and its skull is kind of screaming and it's got like flames in its eyes. And then above it, you've got the hands doing kind of the marionette thing. And they're like marionetting a man who's like on fire. Uh, and then our logo is like very metal. And then the, the title of the record is Order in Decline. And the person's like, <laughs> not a problem. And then they give you this, which is like the most like 1995 Battle of the Bands version of that. As opposed you know what to it, it looks like? It looks like one of those like um graphic fleece blankets off off brand that you get at like Venice Beach or something from like a guy with a shack. Yeah, because it's like not <laughs> even the share zone. Like it's it's not even sort of full kind of like so shitty that it's that it's funny and, and, and deliberately so. Like it's just kind of like, oh this is what sort of shitty design looks like. And, and well, it, and then have, have you seen the one before this, too? Like, I feel like they've been on this, like, budget Hells Angels <laughs> tip for a while. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> like, a cross and two skulls, 13 voices. It's like tribal. 
I know. It's like it's like taking a journey through a tattoo shop where you're going to get hep C for sure. <laughs> it's just so strange that we live at a time when pop stars are so effective at co-opting metal iconography and punk bands who like have more root, like authentic maybe roots in that music and that culture and that aesthetic, like are completely incapable of producing something actually heavy looking. It all just looks like a metal militia (laughs) t-shirt. Yeah. I mean, in a sense, it actually looks more like, like if you were to follow the deep Facebook hole of somebody who commented, that's not real metal, that's gay. Like on some article about some black metal or something, they would have images that look like this. Absolutely. So in a yes. way, this is more real metal. This is actually than... true cult shit. <laughs> as, a, as opposed it to is... like a comeback kid, like black metal kind of long sleeve. <laughs> it is still like truly, like I feel like we could almost do a full exclusive just on the newest Sum 41 <laughs> album cover. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's, it's, it's shocking. But I think that's what, that's what noun number bands conjure right yeah, that's the thing. yeah cause like Sum 41 was undoubtedly huge at a time and still I'm sure does quite well with people who uh, are into having this aesthetic on their who buy, people who buy their blankets on the highway <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> 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 right but like Blink were the only ones that yeah like ascended to le- the level of being just sort of culture icons right and I mean all, maybe it's also cause we call them Blink Right, we don't think about it that often. But even saying Blink-182 doesn't feel that stupid. No. It, yeah, I just think they're the only one. And so maybe it's actually even funnier that now someone named Mind-182, now the 182 is the thing yeah. that people are using. In the same way that like rap is eating itself and how Lil Nas X is using Nas in his name. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, you know, like instead of... And the little, I guess, too. So maybe there, maybe there could be a little one eighty two. That would be Yo, cool. That I mean, it feels like those cultures are basically like already connect, so organically connected that it would make sense yeah. for like a full blink worshiping mumble rapper to 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 <laughs> use that name. So please, if you are an aspiring mumbler, uh, that's that's yours. That's yours to use. Please, um, and and get involved with the pod if you want. But there's also, I guess I will say, since I've been talking about the Twitter so much tonight, there is a man named Gil who's part of the nation now. Uh, what? By accident. <laughs> so shout out to Gil. <laughs> <laughs> Marzen was talking to the teens and said that something about the exclusive, how we should have doxxed someone that was bugging them at school. And then this fucking random reply guy came in and was like, um, actually, you shouldn't dox people. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's like this nerd. <laughs> <laughs> He's this nerd named Gil, so uh, welcome to the nation, Gil. He was. <laughs> the fuck? He's like, just look at this guy. I mean, don't be too mean to him because he's part of the nation now, but uh, shout out to Gil. Gil Rockatansky, uh, part of the nation. Oh, wow. <laughs> In fact, he has three followers from the nation since he reply guyed us. <laughs> um, he also does like they might be giants, so there is a podcast he, he could go. On. Oh, wow, okay, that's good. So he can he can be part. Oh of my that. god, he literally just said to someone that he saw the Irish Blink, no, who caused them to change their name, and he owns the seven inch of. Okay, I've never even heard this band. Thanks to fucking Gil, uh, we can now hear the Blink song "Happy Day," the band that fucked over Blink One Eighty Two. Have you ever heard this? <laughs> no, before? I've never bothered this is to crazy. listen to it. Should we listen to it right Gil. now? Man, maybe Reply Guys aren't so bad after all. Why is everyone complaining about Reply Guys? I don't know. Reply Guys rock. (laughs) This is Blink. And the other fucked up thing... Whoa, this is sick. Is this better than Blink-182? I think it definitely is. Oh, this is great. Not sure now. Yeah, it's getting a little. It's a little bit twee, but then a little bit like. Well, I just want Robert Smith to come in. Like I want it to be just like. Whoa. Yeah, even the art. The art looks like Robert Smith. And the and also it's funny the the Blink logo on here is like a box logo, like a like a hardcore. Band. Yeah, the logo is fucking sick. 
<laughs> so now I've realized that um, Gil is actually a British guy named Barry. <laughs> right. So that's <laughs> so, um, if you want to see a real British guy named Barry, IRL, Bill. I mean Gil. Gil, 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 Gil. Rock, Rockatansky. <laughs> So, Rocking it where, at a this is all. This is still all just the intro for uh, the cover section. So I don't know if we want to keep talking about Gil or <laughs> um, um, some forty one. I could do mid like oh he's up he's tweeting at the Fen Twosler. Jesus, Gil is like in the nation. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm telling you, should I should I throw Gil a follow? Throw Gil a follow. Let's <laughs> bring him into the fold. Gil, Gil. love you, bud. <laughs> just kidding. I don't know. Why would you, like, randomly talk to two teens about doxing? Wow, Josiah, we, why would a grown man just carry on, like, an yeah, hours-long Skype no, conversation no, with two teens? I'm, yeah. fine, I'm fine with befriending them, but to don't dox-splain to some <laughs> teens. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, you've got to come, come, come correct with the teens. You have to come with respect. <laughs> Someone sending him memes of the guy Gil from The Simpsons, I think. Very good. Jesus Christ. What a night. Yeah, this is a good... I'm glad we did the pod tonight. Yeah, see, I told... I can't even find Gil now because there's so many replies <laughs> going on here. It's just... He, so Gil much Gil. Is Gil, Gil... It's Gil Gunderson, right? Gil Gillingsley, yeah. <laughs> Gil Gillingsley. <laughs> His name is now Gil Gillingsley, I've decided. He's like, just read... Read the... Oh, fuck, what happened? Oh, no. Did you just stop recording? He also, like, when he's, oh, not, when he's not replying recording. to us... I thought it was like... No, I just... Oh, my God. Oh, I yeah, raised the imagine? episode, man. I what haven't been tomorrow, talking like this whole time. Um, Gil, on his regular feed, has been tweeting things like, Ben flippin' Affleck. He's such a berry. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy how much of a berry this guy yeah, he's is. He's got berry energy. Um, he really does. Okay, here. I'm trying to share a tweet with you, but Gil's tweeted so much. This is, like, the most fucked thing that I've read in a long time. Um, Gil wrote to the two teen girls... And to Marsden and Steven and Fiona and everyone else, he wrote, I don't even care if the UWUs are disingenuous. You folks seem nice enough. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just, like, I still don't really get what UWU is. No, but, I don't understand uh, it at all. Because this is, this is the stuff that's unfolding at light speed for me, right? And this is what I meant when we started. Is I'm like, I log on. All of a sudden, I'm a, I'm a Gates gay rights <laughs> Everyone's doing the you, you, you emoji. I don't understand what it means. I feel left behind. I'm Imagine if you were like a fan of our guest and this was your first episode. <laughs> right. Yeah, this is a nightmare one. Like, this is not good. <laughs> this, this one is too much pod for even us. Like, we don't know what's going on. No. Um, but I am uh, I'm, uh, happy to be along for the ride with, with Gil. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. To, uh, let's all send our warmest ooh, ooh to Gil. Um, and send a little prayer for Darius. Hope that he comes to us. Yeah. And um, hopefully the pop screen guys having a good night too. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Just just spreading that <laughs> love around, man. I think that's the right thing to do. Okay. Let's start with this cover from 2007. Cool. Um, it's a base cover. Ooh. December 30th, 2007. Ultimately, I was just interested in the shitty aesthetic of the old video, but <laughs> you'll notice the person just plays <laughs> bass. <laughs> Very shittily, um, and like you can't hear the song in the background, which, which Mis- Mr. Man Cosmic Man 2022 seven years ago commented, you can barely hear the song, idiot. And then Troy Wilson replied, you're just jealous because you don't have any YouTube videos and you probably don't have a bass or play it, so shut the fuck up. And then Mr. Man Cosmic Man 2022 replied to Troy Wilson and said. I checked your channel, and you don't have any videos, so why are you saying I'm jealous? All you have are videos that you liked and commented, so don't say I'm jealous. (laughs) Are are, are these (laughs) literal babies? (laughs) I'm going to take the Blink-155 account and tell tell this person that they definitely are jealous. (laughs) No one has ever been more jealous than Mr. Man, Cosmic Man... (laughs) 2022. This okay, is. Okay, I'm adding that. No one has ever <laughs> been more jealous than Mr. Man, Cosmic Man, Man 2022. Yeah. Also, we're getting close to the year that is your namesake. 
Do you think that's the point where he like just ascends <laughs> into the heavens? <laughs> I hope so. I my favorite thing about Troy Wilson's comment is like you you know this person's doing something and you're not even doing something and not only that I bet you wish you owned a base. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. He's like you probably don't have a base or play it. Like he's, he's covering the bases in case he does have. He's covering the bases <laughs> in yeah. case he has a base. But. <laughs> it's collecting dust. You probably don't even have a base, or actually, if you did, you probably don't play it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Wally182 is saying some extremely German shit. <laughs> Sehr gut, Miner. Also, von mir bekommst five. And then there's a censored word. Ooh. Probably a German slur. Yeah. Germans um, are edgy. Anyways, that, that was Red Punk 182, and I just like the video for, for the comment section mostly. I mean, you can hear it. It's just the. You know what? I mean, at least Red Punk 182 owns a base and plays it. Yeah, totally. I gotta say, it sounds like um, uh, Troy Wilson was was motivated to uh, eventually start uploading videos just to sort of prove that even though they're the ones accusing <laughs> them of not being jealous, so they've got a whole bunch of videos uh, like like this. Oh yeah. So this is Lords of Metal. This is Lords of Metal from Troy Wilson proving that yeah, I've, I can upload videos. Now I'm starting to think maybe Troy Wilson's a bit insecure because this is just an audio upload. There's no proof that Troy Wilson's actually playing anything. And there's just a photo of a ripped guy playing a sick metal guitar. <laughs> I mean, it's really a cool, sick actually. Warlock or whatever. I'm going to tweet a photo, a screenshot of this for the nation <laughs> right now. Just give them a taste. Give them a taste of what's to come. Because they all, everyone knows that there's some shit going on. Everyone can feel it in the air. <laughs> yeah. No one's sleeping tonight. It's going to be one of those no, exactly. nights where just like, I'm going to wake up and be like, were, were you tweeting to like 8 a.m., Josiah? You'll be like, <laughs> yes. be like a hundred new offshoot accounts for like I've memes. I've been canceled and uncanceled <laughs> four times. Yeah, exactly. You've risen. Um, okay. Okay, that was a little spoiler. You heard the guy say his own name. <laughs> um, up next, we've got Chris Vlatch with his acoustic. I'm going to play that again a little bit louder. This is Chris Vlatch. Um, and just as a little precursor to this cover from Chris, Chris Vlatch music, Andrew Bates seven years ago wrote, not bad, but the chord progression is wrong. Good job regardless. Like, come on, Andrew. Don't be such a dick. Yeah, what the fuck? You're allowed to change the chord progression if it still fits. Yeah, it's, your, it's a new interpretation. Maybe. Yeah, okay, so this is how he opens the video. Chris Black's acoustic cover of I'm Sorry by Blink-182. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's wearing an extremely ska season hoodie, but this was in 2011, so I think he was really, really ahead of the curve. <laughs> right. He's wearing also the tie-dye shirt. This guy's like full back to the beach. <laughs> He's also playing like in his foyer. It's really so weird. your time. Yeah. It is almost over and I know you're down. I see you around and I know it hurts. He's a big guy for you're this voice, right? Older, yeah. I, I kind of like it though, but also I think it's uploaded again. badly or wrong because it's just hard pan to one speaker. But it's actually making me feel more like I'm in this living room with him. Probably you could skip this part if you're singing, you know? <laughs> yeah, just like, you, could, you, just you don't have to be that true to it. You're already you know, kind of doing a variation. Fresh, fresh a dream. We're unstoppable, indestructible. Nothing happens to our machine. And it's so hard. You gotta get up off your feet. It's the only way I gotta say. You are through the week. Don't waste your time. Cause it is almost over. I kind of like it though. I mean, he's making it's it like his own. Very, it's very charming. It's like he's clearly not trying to get laid or anything, which I think is the accurate complaint about pretty much anything. Right. If you can tell that someone's trying to get laid, it's annoying. I was thinking about that because I, I know what's come up on the pod so many times before with these acoustic covers, and I was thinking like that's actually been what's annoyed me about bands my whole life is when you can openly tell that someone's trying to get laid. Right. Yeah. This is definitely like sexless music. He, the, this guy's trying to not get laid, <laughs> yeah. and it's cool. That's, that, that's the only authentic he's artistic you. expression. He's, he's daring you to lay him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, shit, I accidentally um, tweeted the, the shirtless guy from my own account. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Funny if I accidentally did it from the Exclaim account. You know, <laughs> something really good happened a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
there's a chance that the person who runs the pint in the page room might be someone that I work with. Okay. Potentially. Yeah, that wouldn't be shocking. And yeah. Said person might have accidentally tweeted and tagged the reviewer in a pint and pageman tweet instead of from the exclaim account. That's amazing. And so there was like all this confusion over a weekend. Like, did you just do a prank or something? Like, why is the pod account doing that? So it was like, yeah, the pint and the pageman was uh, crossing wires with the exclaim account. It'd be better if it was the other way around, though, and if exclaim was tweeting like, <laughs> dusty yeah. books define your all. journey, you know? Um, okay, up next we've got Sir Francis Farted is the name of the user. That's a sick name. Um, yeah, it's a kind of page mini. And this is from SoundCloud, and here we go. Bobby McFerrin or whatever. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Let's hear some more singing. They're doing some like... Yeah, it's like they're doing like stomp. It's <laughs> Body percussion, baby. Disgusting. <laughs> I like that it. That was incredibly delightful. I love this song. <laughs> Okay, well, good. Um, this one is good because of the band name, first of all, which is like a very free oh, pump lyric style yes. band name. <laughs> Imagine like, I mean, I don't think this 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 band doesn't seem like they're maybe from like an English speaking country or something, but it's still just so good. Like, I would love a punk band called. Well, there is one that exists, but I'd love a new one called System Victim. Yeah, this is so good. <laughs> this is a good, like, joke, irony, D-beat band name. <laughs> it's, just, it's just... We're System Victim. It's so Supernova. I don't know if you guys had Supernova Battle of the Bands out west, but that was, like, this is the most Supernova band name. Like, this particular strain of, like, high school, just, like, <laughs> terror. Hell yeah. Like, where all the noun number bands would play. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so this is live at the Tea Box Cafe, and I just, while you were listening, you should check out the comments, because it's very, people are very angry about the guitar. This video is also insane, like the person seems to be constantly tripping and falling over <laughs> and putting their thumbs in front of it. <laughs> So good. I absolutely love how shitty everything and is. The way that, like, the, like you said, the cameras are sort of like <laughs> falling around and seemingly is like right up on stage, and it's like this like 
sort of neon underlit club with like the the lights keep blowing out the camera. Like it, there seems to be only two people there, and one of them has a second mic. It's like they're doing almost like a private karaoke room. Yeah, but but it just feels like something <laughs> from like a very trendy movie. Like all this just sort of like ne- like yeah, this totally. would be part of like a fifteen minute single shot take. One of those Terrence Malick newer movies that no one's seen or like that was like shot at Coachella or whatever. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's so sick. But people so are So everyone is saying, yeah, they're polite. just shit. Alfonso Acosta, five years ago, worst cover I've ever seen of this song. Guitar player should call it quits. Only stayed for the drummer, someone says. Um, Adrian Cardena says, the guy who plays guitar sucks horse dick. Um, they've, that person did two comments about the guitarist everyone just hates the guitar but dude here's what i'll Mr. say here's what i'll say about the guitarist okay, yeah. the guitarist is jumping and doing pick slides and looks really cool and has a sick stance and the guitarist is wearing some very sick adidas streetwear that almost looks like oasis or something and so the guitarist to my in my books the guitarist is doing everything that a guitarist is required to do and really you should just be filling in the gaps that they're fucking up because it doesn't matter well Listen, I agree with you, but unfortunately, Mr. Man, Cosmic Man 2022, back in the comments, has this to just to say to you, Josiah, but they suck. Well, first they said nice drummer, but they suck. So now I got to reply again. Um, So this is uploaded (laughs) by Aldi Music with a K. Um, So which one should I reply to Mr. Man, Cosmic Man 2022? Uh, I think you should respond to but they suck and be like, but... I'll say, but fire Johns. You don't even you don't even own a bass <laughs> or play it, <laughs> and you're jealous. So I'm just gonna say That's that. That's good because the jealousy thing really. What's Mister Man Cosmic Man's channel like? This little fucking hmm. Uh, they've uploaded an HQ version of. Oh, that's just liked. They only have liked videos. Are you kidding me? He's so jealous. This person is a fucking loser. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I can't wait to find out that Mr. Man, Cosmic Man 2022 is like uh, a highly <laughs> supportive <laughs> member of the nation. They're on the Patreon, you know. <laughs> oh, Mr. Man, Cosmic Man 2022. <laughs> You're lucky we're not going to be doing a podcast then, probably. I don't know. 80, 80 songs. <laughs> Okay, um, this is the one that I found earlier while I was Googling. This is by Joe Kempsey. This didn't come up when I searched earlier. Um, And this one has a positive review, and it's from last year. So I think this one could be interesting. I should add that it was uploaded one year ago today. Oh, Oh. Oh, they've just seamlessly gone into the song. Like, it started with a... Well, this person's so cool. (laughs) Look at their, look at, like, just look at this. This is from 2018. This person's wearing plaid punk pants, a baby blue long sleeve, and they have the rainbow stripe on their Les Paul. And, like, so many oh, old school shit. blink posters on their wall. This person rules Joe Kempsey. Get in my life. <laughs> Joe Kempsey is the opposite of Mr. Man Cosmic Man 22. Yeah, Joe Kempsey knows what the fuck is up. And also, sick playing. Great tone. All downstrokes. Wearing a wristband from a recent festival they went to. Joe Kempsey, you rock ass. Joe Kempsey also uh, has something in common with another favorite member of the nation, posting videos of them playing RuneScape. They're uh, <laughs> they're a RuneScaper. <laughs> Whew, careful, Joe. Yeah, just like, uh, do, but otherwise, the, RuneScape and chess <laughs> seems to be what they post videos of. So damn. So a bit of a nerd, but even like this Green Day cover, like they're a bit of a nerd, but then they do like very stylized, very hip covers where they dress perfectly and have cool ass posters in the background. Let's check out the Green Day Panic oh. cover because I bet you. <laughs> Good picking. Like, nailing it. Someone start a band with Joe Kempsey, please. I mean, this is a bit of a boring <laughs> intro. I mean, this is just showing <laughs> off how consistently they can do that one <laughs> yeah. thing. 
really good with the sort of well, it's a different strumming pattern with Green Day and Joe Kempsey really can do it all. So Joe Kempsey also appears to be in like a Adidas tracksuit in this video, like a blue Adidas tracksuit. I found their Twitter, ESPN Kemp. <laughs> See what Joe Kempsey's up to. Working for ESPN, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow, they're like they're this per- Joe Kempsey's super into chess. Um yeah, damn, shout out to Joe Kempsey. Love you. Start a band. Start a band. Um that's definitely the worst grown-up song by the way. Um <laughs> anyways, moving along, the last two covers are very interesting. I'm going to start with this one actually. Um you might recognize the name of this person. Oh shit. So, it, it's fitting that we're in full up our own ass mode because uh, this cover is from a dedicated member of the nation, perhaps someone who is involved with multiple accounts, allegedly, well, maybe not. But those aren't all different have individuals. Their... <laughs> <laughs> but they definitely are under their own account involved with us, and this is, of course, David Park, um, who has like quite a hefty set of covers on here. And this was uploaded in 2019, so you know. Ooh. You know that he, he knew. He knew. You know what I mean? He knew. What if it sucks? <laughs> what if it sucks? <laughs> it's pretty long. What if he gets his dog to <laughs> we should, drink his pee-pee yeah, at the end? <laughs> listen to a bit and then, uh, uh, and, then, and then skip to the end and see what sort of like pee-dog uh, trouble he gets into. <laughs> so David Park covered this with... Uh, the user S A H O F F twenty two for a Reddit tribute to Blink One Eighty Two's Dude Ranch compilation. Okay. So we won't judge you for that. Your dual loyalties to Reddit and Blink One Fifty Five. But um, here we go. <laughs> Yo, this is the sick. It's a nice the touch. little drums and stuff at the beginning. It's so good. They they totally like amped up how slow it is at the yeah. start, but I like it. It makes it cool. Okay, here's the fade. Come on, David, do something sketchy with your dog, please. <laughs> There's still ten seconds left. Please do something gross. Come on, come on, David. Yo, fuck that dog. David, start an account dedicated to yourself. Uh, getting your dog to drink your piss, please. <laughs> it's a must. Yeah, that was fucking sick. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. Um, it's really, it's crazy. I think those drums were fake, but it's it's crazy that it's like hard to tell. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, it's at that point now where like, especially the stuff you could just like even get for Garage Band. Um, like it's it's there's no reason to ever deal with a drummer ever again. Yeah, or like if you like have. Maybe GarageBand too, but I know I I like downloaded a cracked version of Logic a few years ago, and there's like different actual drummers that you can like jam with, named like Lance yeah, or something, yeah. or like Billy, and they all have like different hats to tell what kind of music they're into <laughs> or whatever. The universal <laughs> symbols. No, you can download extra packs. Like we do, like the last batch of Junior Battles demos, we've been writing to a drum pack that's all the actual drummer of hate breed, like doing samples. And so, Whoa, yeah, really? That's sick. It's so much fun because you just like put on some dumb loop and then you sit around and, you know, Steve McBean it and just play riffs in a room for, you know, like an hour, <laughs> two hours, et cetera. Oh, boy. The new junior battles are going to be so stoned, isn't no, it? No, 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 because it's unfortunately uh, or fortunately it's not. It's not an affliction that has overtaken, like, everyone who writes in the band. <laughs> right. All right. The, the last one I want to play, um, this is some sort of 
like weekly cover project, I think, but I just want you to click through and read the hashtags on SoundCloud. Okay. So uh, this cover by Gosh Dang uh, has the hashtags blank 182 cover. I'm sorry, Josiah Hughes, Sam Sutherland, 155 pod, Bill Billingsley, Jesus Christ. And it worked because I found it just through searching. I did, was not sent this, and it even says, play it on the pod, friends. Holy shit. <laughs> so I really shit. do feel like this is a special nation week where we just sort of, all the treasure trails are here. We're just sort of like existing in this beautiful world that yeah, we've created. Yeah, I love it. And it's very actually frightening also. Oh, yeah. I feel like I don't have any control over my own life in a way. So th- this is also titled 13.3 Week 52, I'm sorry, Blink-182 cover. When, when was this uploaded? Do you think this was also a prediction of when we would do this song? <laughs> ten months ago. Hmm. Did we do that ten months ago? I don't know. It looks like this person has been doing their own Oh, like weekly... all they're doing covers every week. Yeah. Okay, that's sick. And then this is the first one that's for us. Okay. So, I mean, a little bit. Whatever. Now i got to check out the Sam been. Sutherland hashtag <laughs> on, um, on SoundCloud. Yeah, also missing. they're separately... It's hashtag Bill Billingsley as well. I just want to let everyone know that that's not how you spell Bill Billingsley. And if we are going to alert his employers to the fact that he's obsessed with pop punk podcasts, <laughs> might want to start spelling his name correctly. Um, so here's, here's this cover of I'm Sorry from Gosh Dang, who I know for a fact someone in the nation has this Jar Jar Binks avatar, oh, so you know I'm it sorry, is, I can't remember. The avatar is I can't it's remember. A Jar Jar Binks latex mask with glasses that say swag on them, like sunglasses <laughs> that say swag. I'm really sorry that I can't remember your avatar and username <laughs> and real name, but shout out, gosh dang. Okay, let me just see what happens at the end and then we'll go. Okay. up the dog no I'm missed, that doesn't happen a, a missed end. opportunity there to have some <laughs> some some pee and dog sounds that was fucking incredible are you kidding I me i was literally like this is insane a, like i was looking just a, fully agape in awe just out into the nothingness in front of me when the transition happened where i was like okay how are they going to handle like the the move into the fast part and then you had that like And the answer was perfectly. Was, absolutely perfectly. That was fucking astonishing. That was so good. That was so good. That, yeah, that was like unfortunately like an incredibly earnest moment. Because I didn't really listen to it earlier. I just saw the context, but it was like our 
people get it. You know what I mean? Like, this is, like, a perfect interpretation of the song that is, like, completely so cool and sick. That's so sick. And I'm sick. just beaming. I love the nation. Yeah, that's amazing. That's so, the fact that that exists, like, that would have been, like, I would have felt the same way about it. But the fact that someone did that and did that, like, at some point uploaded that and we popped into their minds and then they tagged all of our names and Bill's name in it <laughs> is, like, feels like a gift to, that you have been given, right? Like, it's that's it's so insane. Sick. That was so good. Wow. Okay, so Josiah, uh, what are your final thoughts on the song I'm Sorry by Gosh Dang? I'm not sleeping tonight. It's, I know. It's tw- I'm going to tweet till sunrise. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to bed. Okay. Well, good night. <laughs> So we're here with our guest, Carl Kuhn, who is somebody that we were just realizing we've followed each other on Twitter for many, many years, and we've never spoken until right now. No, history in the making. And what really happened was um, you basically thirst trapped your way onto the podcast. Oh, my God. As I do with literally everything in my life, (laughs) I just will it to happen by being like, hey, I want to do this. (laughs) The thing is, like, there's a lot, there's a long sort of informal list of guests that are in the ether, and you've been on there for a while because you sort of are just like, you're, you're plugged into all these channels that are constantly popping up and you, your name keeps popping up. But what does happen a lot is I see people do the podcast thirst trap on Twitter and say, have me on your podcast. And it's like someone that I've literally DM'd before and they've said, yeah, I'll do it. And then they ghost me. And then like a week later, they're like, why doesn't anyone ever ask me on their podcast? I'm like, what the fuck? I asked you. So I am sorry. I'm glad that we didn't get to that point. Yeah, I was I'm like, I was kind of expecting you to ghost me, but then you never did. I'm rarely the one ghosting. I'm almost always the like, the ghost T. <laughs> Is that correct? I'm like trying. My brain wow. works so slowly. That's interesting. I don't know. No one ever talks about the ghost T. We're so focused on the perpetrator rather than the victim in that scenario. Well, I'm absolutely sure that this goes both ways. And there are people that think I, they would say I ghost them all the time. So, <laughs> you know. It's, it's a two-way street. So did, when you did your little tweet asking to be on a podcast, were you... My little tweet. Why is it little? <laughs> it was actually really big. There was a lot of characters in that. <laughs> I mean, all tweets are little in a way. That's kind of the, the point. Sure, um, they're on the screen. When you did your average size tweet, <laughs> your thirst trap, did you have Blink-155 in your sights, or was there a bigger fish that you didn't get? You can be honest. Okay, well, Blink-155 has been in my sights for a while because I have two friends that are, like, devout listeners. So I, I they were, like, they'd always text me. I only got into podcasts, like, six months ago, probably not even, maybe, like, three months ago. They're um, bad, first of all, so <laughs> you've made a mistake. <laughs> a huge, big mistake. Huge <laughs> mistake. 2019, I'm making lots of mistakes, but... <laughs> Um, but when I started listening to them, they were like, hey, like, you know, I was like putting out Rex being like, what the fuck do I listen to? This is stupid and fun. And I kind of like it. And they were like, this one's a good one. So it had been on my radar. I listened to James Cassar's episode because I absolutely love him. And then I know Sam and Kitty have been on, too. So I know like in the friend universe, Blink-155 seemed very close to me. Right. Like in our solar system, <laughs> you guys are like Mercury. <laughs> that's good. We're not like the was it Jupiter that's not a planet anymore? It's Pluto. Pluto. <laughs> See, I don't even know. I remember in high school, we took like a, a field trip to the science museum in DC. This is, you know, this story sucks. And I am probably going to say it all wrong, but I remember like a group, a group of us. Yeah, I know. <laughs> huge disclaimer on this entire episode. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, like a huge group of us were in like the, the air and space museum. And they had this big like semicircle around the door of all the planets. And the very last one was Pluto. And I fucking kid you not, someone that works there had just taped a thing of cardboard <laughs> over it. <laughs> So that you couldn't see it. And it was like this beautiful black, like (laughs) backlit, like walkthrough display and this brown piece of cardboard with like masking tape covering Pluto. It's rude. I wonder if Tom recognizes Pluto. That's, you gotta ask. I know. Do you get to see Pluto, either of you? Or is there any sort of connection? He knows Bill Billingsley, um, who is the uh, grown adult man who's obsessed with the podcast and obsessed with Tom and he's always going to Tom's signings and like holding up 
signage with our podcast name on it. So I think Tom must be somewhat aware of what it is. But hey, that um, fucking rocks ass. I <laughs> love that. Yeah, just so you know, you're like in for you're you're about to enter into a, a world that you cannot escape from now that you've been on this podcast. I am so I feel like when I when you guys start following me or like when the podcast started like tweeting at me or whatever, I got like some blink follows that way. And they would like I feel like some people responded to the podcast tweet even being like, Go on blink and I'm like <laughs> And so then you thirst trapped me and it worked. I took the bait. Hey. Oh, oh my God, I love it. So, but so there was no bigger one. You weren't like trying to get on like Song Exploder or one of those normie ones. Well, I mean, Song Exploder is like the goal. Like, I mean, that's like the dream. I feel like, and it's one of the like five I subscribe to. But um, you know, it wasn't like I didn't expect that to happen. No one knows who my fucking band is, despite the fact that we've been around for twelve million years. I know who your band is. Your band is Museum Mouth. It is shameless the, plug time. Yeah, usually we do that at the end, like all pods. But I did want to talk to you about it because, as someone who cares a lot about merch, I think it's very interesting that your band was or is on Equal Vision, which is like home of the Bane <laughs> hoodie and the Jane Doe T-shirt. Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah, I, you know what's funny is I feel like we have some iconic merch too that fits the the, the legacy of being an Equal Vision band. <laughs> We had a T-shirt. We had someone in a T-shirt of ours um, appear on BuzzFeed and a list about clothes. Oh, my God. I think I might have seen that, actually. It sounds yeah. familiar. What's what's the shirt? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it goes as high as the zipper between the ba and the ne or the <laughs> or the Jane Doe face, but I want to believe. OK, it's a white shirt and it has um, it's like an illustration that my friend Dave Blaza did of uh, two gay guys kissing to like bearish gay guys kissing. And it says museum up underneath. That. Oh, yeah, that is a really good shirt. Actually, I've seen that a lot. It's very mm-hmm. good. Wow. What an interesting journey that um, Equal Vision has been on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fun fact about Equal Vision. Everyone there is amazing. I love them all. Since we signed, there's been like a lot of turnover and I don't think I know everyone now. Um, but we put out a record with them in 2016. And since then, I've probably only emailed the staff I know of like five times. So we have this running joke in our band where we think that we're dropped. But then <laughs> around Christmas time, we get the like holiday calendar and our pick is still in it. So it's like, okay, we're still, we're not dropped yet. Does anyone have Bane lyrics in their email signature? Uh, no one I've emailed with. Oh, Actually, there's kind man. of a lack of email signatures with people at Equal Vision. Oh, that's so that's a, so disappointing. I used to live with um, a guy who ha- sort of be- went on to become a Vancouver hardcore legend, um, and I live. I was friends with these guys when they were first getting into hardcore, and I remember he worked in a sheet metal shop, and he would I'd wake up so early because he'd be getting ready for work by like listening to Can We Start Again in the kitchen and like doing mosh moves at like seven a.m. Oh was, my god, that sounds was, like a living nightmare. <laughs> I mean, it was so incredibly charming and so upsetting at the same time. Yeah, definitely polarizing. <laughs> so, but okay, Museum Mouth for people who have never heard of Museum Mouth. I mean, I even find it hard to categorize it other than just like it's a rock band. Yeah. And I think that that has been um, a big hindrance in our um, our rise to success is because I found working at a label now everyone loves genres. Yeah. And I have never given a fuck about them until now. And I'm like, oh, my God, what genre is my band? Like, I guess we're just you're right. We're just a rock band. Right. So um, you're a rock band and you are also. A drummer who sings. Yeah, fucking freak of nature. Which is like, yeah, I don't know. Who's who's like who's your big drummer that sings? Obviously Travis can't sing for shit. And neither does Oh my Scott. god, what are you talking about? <laughs> Travis has the best voice in Blink. <laughs> is there I'm like uh, I'm not um disclaimer again, I'm not like the hugest, hugest Blink fan, at least especially not currently. Um, is there any evidence of Travis singing ever? He does. He's oh fuck! Someone's gonna get mad at me for not remembering this on oh, on the self oh. on the self. We call it the self unentitled album. He uh, says like something like "You did this. This is the end" or whatever on the song down. He like whispers some oh, spoken that's word. Him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That is kind of sick, honestly. Yeah. Dan is like one of my faves on that record. Well, don't say you're not a huge fan because we we get people on here who are like, oh, yeah, I'd love to come on your Blink-182 pro, uh, podcast. I love Damn It. I love What's My Age Again. I'm like, come on. You got to know more. <laughs> They're like, I just want to talk about aliens and Tom. Ha, ha, ha. And I'm like, come on. We, we need the We're- deep heads. We need some heads in here. And you, you told me that you're kind of comfortable with most of it because Blink-182 was a, at least at some point big for you, right? 
Oh, absolutely. Huge, very bigly formative band for me. Um, Enema of the State was the first CD I ever bought with my own money. And before that, I remember growing up, um, I am, I'm an only child, but I'm friends with a massive family and I would spend tons and tons of time there. And I remember my friend Austin, his older sister, Allie, had a copy of Dude Ranch on CD that just like floated around the house like some sort of relic. Like we, <laughs> we knew we weren't allowed to listen to it because it was like so explicit and fucked up. But like, of course, we would always try and we would like steal it and then realize we didn't have a CD player and dumb stuff like that. So I feel like that was my experience with the album, too. Like it was totally a contraband CD that was passed around. Mm-hmm. It was uh, drugs. Yeah, it was. For me, it was my first and only experience with drugs was uh, Dude Ranch compact disc. Oh my god, are you straight edge? I am actually. I um, love that. I wasn't for a long time, but I've never really been like a drug guy, just like drinking a lot guy. Yeah. But now drugs are scary. Now I get high on a Blink One Ninety Two podcast instead. Yes, go off. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, okay, it was contraband, it was, like, off-limits, it was naughty, and so, specifically, the the sketch of Mark Hoppus feeding a dog his piss was probably, like, I mean, I know for me it was, like, what, am I allowed to listen to this? This is crazy. Yeah, that's, honestly, that's that was wrong to me back then, and it is still wrong to me now. <laughs> it's honestly fucked up. <laughs> Why? Why is Mark? it so fucked up? Open your mind, Carl. Oh my god, shut up. I that's A disgusting. <laughs> and B, it's immature. C, it's inhumane. <laughs> I just Mark is one of those people I love Mark. I think Mark Hoppus is like a god walking this earth, but he's got a lot of strikes against him. Yeah. And that's one for that's, sure. That's one of them. I mean, at least well, okay. When people talk about like this, I'm gonna go deep on you here. When people talk yeah. about bestiality, they say that it's because like the animal can't consent. I guess is one criticism of it. But it seems like the dog really wants to drink his urine. Oh my god, Josiah! <laughs> I entered this fully ready to stand, and I unfortunately, <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna be able to stand. At least not much longer. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying Tom's the one who sings about actually having sex with animals, whereas Mark is just, like, feeding the dog. Oh, I mean, if we had to pick two, like, if, they were, if we're going to pick sides, Tom is absolutely the more chaotic evil of the two. So <laughs> that's on brand for him, whereas with Mark, it's, like, lawful neutral right. or maybe chaotic neutral even with oh, the dog aspect. I don't understand those memes ever. I just sort of scroll past them because I'm too oh, dumb. Oh, you're going to hate me because I literally, the minute I revisited this song, I was like, wow, this is Tom's most galaxy brain song ever. <laughs> I mean, I like, like, I'm into that meme, but the, the whole like chaotic, <laughs> like when there's a chart that goes both directions, I'm just like, I, I can't figure this out. What you got to do is, do you watch Drag Race? This is like the most textbook gay question ever, <laughs> but do you watch Drag Race? Do you I actually Tom's don't, Drag no. Race? Oh, fuck. Okay, see, a good season of Drag Race, if you, like, you know, you get to meet all the queens and you get to know them and, like, learn what they're about, that's, like, the most easy way to, like, map out, like, lawful good, like, chaotic neutral, okay. lawful evil. Because so many of them fit those descriptions, like, flawlessly. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, maybe if I have a bunch of time and uh, a need to learn how those meme formats work, I'll do it yeah. that way. That's my recommendation <laughs> to you. So, so Mark is your guy, though. Yeah, I love Mark. Interesting. I know it's one of those. It's I don't. It really kind of depends on the day, but I feel like more days in the year are Mark days for me than Tom days. <laughs> Isn't he just like? Well, I don't know. I, I used to think that. I used to think Mark was like the most charming one, but now I just feel like he's too desperately clinging on to something. Whereas Tom is at least kind of off on his own journey. Okay, that's a very fair. Um, Assumption, but as someone who is also desperately clinging on to something, uh, <laughs> I see a lot of uh, Mark in myself. Um, he also plays Pokemon Go, which is something I unabashedly do as well, even despite the fact that it is absolutely a character flaw. Right. So um, I love that about him. <laughs> but he's and I also, love that about me. I guess he's also just like the thing that I don't like is Mark's always like a year behind on everything like it's oh, great yeah. like he'll i feel like at any given moment he could still tweet about harambe and it would be I mean, like just, perfectly he just tweeted about pine grove <laughs> yeah oh yeah i saw that i mean come on that's like <laughs> like how I does it even happen it too he did like delete it, it which is even I, almost more like awkward 
it's almost dare I say that's almost even more a year behind. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, he didn't, didn't he read the pitchfork uh, apology slash album announcement? God, I don't we gotta change the subject because this is <laughs> I'm like unstanding myself as we speak. <laughs> yeah, I mean Mark I guess I guess it's like charmingly daddish how clueless Mark is. Yeah, also he's still like in music and uh, I don't know if you know this, but I'm in a band, so <laughs> I you know, I'm not gonna say I am here for networking purposes, but I have tweeted at him before, like, you know, Hey, you've said and done a lot of homophobic things, and if you took me on tour, I could petition the gay community to at least absolve you a little bit. Really? Yeah, that's a good. That's actually a really good move. I think, um, I think that's what he needs to do. But that's a good point. <laughs> is also like, what, uh, d- does the gay community just forgive them for all that stuff? I mean, no. The gays don't. The gays they never forget. And they never, they never forgive and they never forget. They just, they ebb and flow. It's like the tide. <laughs> because it's never stream. The ocean doesn't go away. The gay ocean, it just <laughs> rises and falls. I do think Mark has like, especially tried to pivot to wokeness and inclusion in a way that, that he's, it seems like he's trying to do that, but I've never, I don't think I've ever seen him like openly apologize for some stuff that they've done. Yeah. If those tweets exist, I, they're not on my timeline, so... But I think Tom has some uh, pretty sketchy tweets still in the backlogs. Dude, Tom is so nuts. I I love him a lot, a lot. I respect him a lot. I watched the movie, the one that was on Netflix, the one about the man going to space. Um, uh, what, was wait, it called? what was it called? Love? Was oh, it, that. that oh, that was yeah. on Netflix. That's like the Angels and Airwaves rock movie. Yeah, I watched it. I don't remember. Any, it was years ago, and I don't remember anything about it. But I remember, like, seeing it and being like, oh, I have to add this to the queue. And then, like, you know, scrolling for another 10 minutes and be like, okay, I guess I just got to watch this now. <laughs> and you don't remember anything about it? I truly don't. I feel like it was in a year where I got, like, the Men in Black pen. Like, I like it's just gone from my brain now. But <laughs> I do remember at least putting it on and coming back to me. Yeah, I actually really want to watch it. I'll probably do it for like a bonus episode one day because I've been tr- like now that I'm so deep in and I've lost all sense of good and bad from <laughs> analyzing like what I do so closely. I feel like I'm ready to be a full on Angels and Airwaves fan. Do you regret ever doing this, ever going down this <laughs> rabbit hole? No, because I was kind of all ready to like say goodbye to culture anyways. Like I was ready. This is sort of like a kamikaze mission of just like being done with cool things but if you kind of if you view culture as like a landscape it's like you're building your own tower in the landscape <laughs> it's true that's, that's what, <laughs> so you're doing something really cool you're just you're losing your relevancy to other parts of culture <laughs> exactly like i am literally through the podcast friends with dan reynolds of imagine dragons now that's an actual fact Okay, that is literally so sick. That thunder song bangs so hard. It's I know, but then I learned that like if you, I, I mean, you know how like when someone is your friend and you're like, oh, my friend's band. To me, that's oh. like Imagine Dragons now. So I like am more forgiving of all of their songs, and I've just okay, grown to like them. That's honestly a weird. That's a weird flex. <laughs> um, but also, I could see myself doing that, being like, oh yeah, my friend Dan like texted me, like I, I gotta take this, and be like, oh, what band is he in? Like he's in Imagine Dragons. Exactly. I literally have to do that. And so when I first like started befriending Max Bemis, I had to do that. Where I'd be like, oh, I like have to take this call. It's my friend Max, and so I'd be like, Max, who? Like, who is this Max guy? I'd be like, oh, Max Beam is. But it was like, it was like obviously I'm aware of how lame and horrible that is. No, but, but you still also, have to do it. Yeah, you must. You literally must because I don't want to ever be that guy that's like so like flagrant with it. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah, you have to do the humble brag way, of course. Yeah, I'm from a small town in North Carolina. If you think it's crazy that I'm texting Max. Max Bemis, I think it's more crazy than you, I promise. So, so it's sending me for a fucking loop. How did you become friends with Max Bemis? Uh, the internet. I have a Blink 182 podcast. And <laughs> oh, I have... yeah, okay. <laughs> no, right. I literally, you want to know what's really fucked up? I thirst tweeted at him, but it was not like, it wasn't unprovoked. It was this like weird thing where, um, do you want me to tell the story? I would love for you to. Okay, I didn't know if you were. You also not. don't have a, a check, and that's something that I think has helped me in my irritating celebs into being my friends 
on Twitter, but yeah. you, you just have this, is that an alligator or something? Yeah, it's an alligator. Sometimes I forget it's there, and then I will see someone else has one, and I'm like, that's such a cute emoji. Because, you know, and that, everyone who's in the Blink-155 Nation uh, has a bunny the in their name. Yes, but, I learned that fast. <laughs> then somebody pointed out that... Uh, Richard Spencer has a bunny in his name now too, so we're like bad, bad look. <laughs> Either we need to really horrible look. You got to switch to the other bunny, the one that's not so realistic. I know, but then it doesn't look like the skanking rabbit from the. I mean, I don't know. Do you uh, really want it to look like the skanking rabbit? Should we? Should we just take the gator? Maybe. Uh, please no, <laughs> unless this, unless you really do want this to become my Blink One Eighty Two podcast. What 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 made you add the gator? I mean, you've you've had it for so long. I love alligators. They're, alligators and crocodiles are my favorite animal. Like, I want to be one. And then I <laughs> learned through tweeting about that a lot that that's called being a scaly. And I'm, I'm here to say, I'm here to set the record straight. I'm not a scaly. Not that I have anything wrong with scaly. I don't see anything wrong with scaly. Wow. So I have no problems with them. That's but my next uh, deviant art search term for sure. God, you're going to get a bunch of King K. Rule from Smash Brothers and Donkey Kong, like, fan art. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay, so Max Beam is saw, he's a fellow scaly. And he was oh like, my God, shut up. <laughs> this slander is so strong on this pod. Um, no, okay, so he and I, um, we were releasing records on the same sort of, like, release schedule, and we premiered songs on the same day. Uh, and Punk News, rest in peace, um, Punk News, uh, they covered both th- of our song premieres. It's th- not gone. Yeah, it's not gone. <laughs> it's not gone. It will never be gone. Although, um, uh, this is a story for another day, but um, the most outspoken enemy of the pod works for Punk News, so that's pretty interesting. Oh, this is a Punk News love story, so <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but, okay, so they ran um, they ran both the song premiere, like, post being like, oh, you know, Museum Out premiered a song on Noisy today, and Say Anything premiered the song from Hebrews, and they accidentally embedded the Say Anything song in our post. Oh, so Classic. I- I know. I know. What a hot mess, I would say. <laughs> but it has truly saved my life because I tweeted at him being like, hey, everyone saying our new song sounds a lot like Say Anything, but I'll let you be the judge. <laughs> and uh, then I like after 10, 20 minutes, I like responded being like, OK, but here's like the actual premiere if you do want to listen to the song. And like, you know, fast forward uh, a couple hours and we got the Max Venus follow and he was like, this is so sick. And then fast forward a couple of months and he was emailing me being like, I want to sign your band. And then fast forward some more months and we're on tour with him and you know, the rest is history. That rules. Yeah. It's very cool. And he's, it's crazy too. Cause like we had been a band for like four or five years at that point, but like, existing in literal obscurity like in rural north carolina we've done like a couple east coast like tours to play some shows with some friends but like it's so crazy to be able to say that the one person who has said the most nice things about my band to me is max bemis like that's like mind-blowing yeah that's so cool i mean no offense to dan but i think that's almost better than having dan reynolds (laughs) from imagine dragons in your corner I mean, I want now. I want Dan to listen to my band, and I want them to compete. I want my two dads to compete for my approval. So, okay, so "Enem of the State" was your first big, your first CD. Yeah, is like at this point in your life when you look back, what's the one? Oh, from that record, or no, like in general, like the discography. What's the you're like? This is the best Blink One Eighty Two album. I would still say Enema of the State. I just think that it's like the production to go from Dude Ranch to that record. The production is such a huge step forward. And to me, the songwriting is such a huge step forward. Um, And it's a very like to me, it's a very varied record in terms of tone, even though like obviously self unentitled is much more sonically varied um, and stuff like that. But I just think Enema is like the golden child. Fair. What about you? I, I mean, it changes all the time. I'm just, I'm still lost in this. Maybe in 10 years, I'll make sense of this chapter of my life. As long as it's not Take Off Your Pants and Jacket. Yeah, you were telling me that you hate that one. I hate that record. And I really think it's solely because of the anthem part two. What? I despise that song. <laughs> Why? Because it, it's, of the lyrics. It's so fucking gay. It's like the <laughs> gayest song ever. <laughs> like, it's just so stupid. <laughs> And it's fine because, like, I I could go through my own discography and be like, this song is horrible. 
Like I have like the self awareness to be like, what the fuck was I on when I thought this was like the shit? So I would like pray to God that Tom has that as well. But I just that song is. That's the so. okay, honestly. That's the one of the main things I think of why Mark is not my favorite because I feel like he is not capable of saying out loud what is the worst Blink One Eighty Two song. Oh, totally not. And I know people that write music. But I know, like, that songwriter. Like, we all do. We all have, like, that friend that is, you know, incapable of, be- of being like, yeah, that song I wrote was fucking shit. Yeah, and it's so that's weird. That's fine. Like, you can be that songwriter. <laughs> that's fine. Obvious- I mean, he's my favorite, so, like, obviously I'm fine with that. But to have that ability is really important, too, to be like, yeah, that song sucks ass. <laughs> so how do you but feel then- about the song I'm Sorry, though, as an album closer? I think it's a great album closer and I think that it's a great album closer because a it's long Mm -hmm. and B it does a lot of stuff and C it is the point of view is so purposely vague that you can just apply these remorseful lyrics to literally anyone or anything. Um, I think it's a good album closer. Do I think it's a good song? No, I think it's kind of a bad song, but I think it's a great, what, the space that it occupies on the record, it does a good job there. What? So what do you think is bad about it? I think the lyrics being so vague, it hurts the song overall. Like, yeah. who, what's the scenario here? Is it a breakup? Did someone's child die? Like, what <laughs> happened? Like, I know you guys analyzed this stuff sort of beforehand, so what have you guys talked about? Well, we haven't recorded that part yet, so I'm going to say, I'm going to quote you and then pretend that you're copying me later on in the episode. I am, cannot wait to report you all. I'm going to unfollow, <laughs> block, report. I don't know. I, I do kind of think that in you're right, but I also think it kind of sums up the album as a whole in that it's like like the song Lemmings is clearly about saying goodbye to the punk scene and sort of giving up on the dream. And so maybe, I mean, that's always what pops into my head with a song like this. But also the vagueness is like they're so immature that they can't actually, even though they can communicate the emotion and frustration, they can't communicate like any specifics at all because they're too immature. And then it's, even when they are vulnerable, they have to put a pissing sketch after because they're oh like, <laughs> they're just like every time that they open up a little bit too much, they're like, oh, fuck, I got to cover that up. And then they act like children. Totally. I com- I agree with you 100 percent with that. I I think that's a really good analysis of this song. I truly wish, I wish that Tom was just a little bit older, a little bit more wise with this song and it had more of a perspective because then it would be like, it'd be very strong. It would be Enema. I feel like that's what he gained in Enema was like a perspective in songwriting where it's not just these vague one-liners that build a mood but don't tell you anything. I mean, to me, this actually honestly could be like a Bane song or something when I look at the lyrics. Oh, my God, stop. <laughs> oh, my God. I think I saw Bane once. Isn't that – I'm just like thinking that – I'm like thinking out loud about myself right now. I'm at doing like an Equal Vision on, Christmas party uh, or something? No, they don't invite <laughs> us to those if those happen. <laughs> we haven't sold enough records for it's that because you've yet. been dropped. Shut up. Don't jinx us. <laughs> Um, See, the thing here's the thing about me is that we analyze the lyrics on this show because it's an easy way to babble on and fill time and find jokes. But I actually my rule in life when I've written songs and when I listen to music is the only thing I mostly care about is that the lyrics aren't so embarrassing that you notice them, to be honest. Really? Yeah. I'm not like a big lyrics person. Okay, see, I, wow, I am, I have been called, like, a bleeding heart to a fault when it comes to lyrics. I have been, I have lost friends because of lyrics. <laughs> I, like, love lyrics. I love when they are, like, they're just so disgustingly personal. So you're, like, I, full earnest. Oh, yeah, I, my middle name might as well fucking be earnest, because that's, like, my shit. I eat it up. That's what I love to listen to. And, okay, that's actually – it's funny that that we're talking about this because obviously, like, pop punk was huge for me as, like, a kid. But nowadays, it's, like, probably my least favorite genre. And it's scary because my band kind of, like, we still occupy that space where it's, like, that that sort of music has always come so easily to us. But it's, like, every day I'm, like, I don't like this anymore. (laughs) Right. So what, like – 
Okay, there's there's so many directions we could go in. First of all, I want to know how you ruined a friendship over lyrics. Dude, literally, my therapist right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Mark Marin. <laughs> oh my god, stop. <laughs> Um, how have I lost a friend because of lyrics? I don't. I mean, I'm friends come and go. <laughs> Josiah, I think we both know that. Usually go for me, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go is, yeah. Go is the trend here. I agree with you on that. <laughs> um, but you know, one just went, some just went, you know, you hang out with some people and then you write a song and then those people disappear and you think to yourself like, huh. I wonder. So is it because how. you're writing a song about them, but it's not enough of a subtweet, and then they figure it out, and they're like, "God damn it, Carl!" I mean, that could be it. You know, <laughs> the like Charlie Day meme with all the strings and the wires on the. <laughs> that's them being like. That's them presenting their case on why they're not my friend anymore. So do you, so, but is it an, ever a song like? So do you listen to like modern um, scrams kind of stuff? Like no, e- I don't know what scrams means. I I don't totally know either. But every time I talk about how I don't like it, people get mad at me. <laughs> you said it so confidently. That's I know. Like a word I, I didn't even. It expect means it today. means. Like, I mean, also, I don't think it should ever be uttered out loud. But I think it's like because the word screamo was ruined by Ronnie Radke, then people have to start saying scrams instead. Well, I would say that pop punk has been ruined by a lot of people. Yeah. But like pop punk is so inherently bad and corny from the beginning that you can't really ruin it. Okay. Listen, I have like, I have a lot of thoughts on just those two words together and how they interact. Like to me, pop punk shouldn't be a slur and it is. And in some instances, it really doesn't feel like they're okay. Okay. When it when the pop and the punk are mixed together in this direction, when it's like a punk song with pop sensibilities, that still works for me. Like that's like cool. And Blink is a great example of that, where it's at least early Blink, like you know, Dude Ranch, Cheshire Cat, Buddha, fucking all the shit, the Anima even, like all those, all like that. When it's like a punk song, when it's like literally like punk musicality borrowing melody and song structure from pop music. Like that works. That concoction works. Like pop punk, I feel like was made in a in a chemistry lab, <laughs> and when you mix the vial of of pop into the punk, it works. But when you mix the punk into the pop, it like creates like is the word noxious? <laughs> I think it's noxious. <laughs> it creates like noxious fumes. And when the first time they mixed it that way the noxious fumes killed someone <laughs> and then the person that died uh he came they came back to life as a, a zombie and the zombie instead of craving brains just craved merch <laughs> and that's like that's what created the pop punk we have now and i hate that but you're on the most important merch label of all time but listen we didn't get there because i thirst tweeted <laughs> equal vision <laughs> <laughs> we got there because I thirst tweeted someone on Equal Vision who's not even on there anymore. <laughs> that's no shade to Equal Vision because I truly do love them. Well, yeah. But, the mer- think of the merch. Um, the way that you just – well, Okay, hold on. The counter argument to that is that I work for a label that sells very little merch. Ooh. There you go. Spo- we, we only have label twos. That's all we've had for years and years. And sometimes we don't even have those. And th- Sorry, that label is called – Tiny Engines. And that seems to be sort of a label that f- kind of flirts with poppy punk or punky pop. But but I think it's interesting the way you've just explained that because I feel like when people are trying to be like highbrow in a press release, instead of saying pop punk, they'll say punk pop. Yes, I've seen that and that is disgusting too. It's so weird. It's gr- like what do you think you're pulling over on someone when you do that? <laughs> So like, you know, we know we all know what those words mean. It doesn't matter how you I mean, it does, because I just went on like a whole diatribe about it. But like <laughs> when it comes to music press, we all know what you're trying to sell us. It's just it's sad that people still care about genres so much because they're all really embarrassing and terrible tags. Oh, yeah. Retweet. I completely agree. There's nothing like how do you say even to say I'm in a punk band? It's like. If you're like if you're not like 18, that's a pretty embarrassing thing to say. Like I'm I'm, I'm a punk. I'm literally, I'm turning 29 this year, and when I say that sentence out loud to people, I want to kill myself. <laughs> like, nothing makes me want to die more. And I got, like, a lot of things going on that could make me want to die. But that alone. 
Yeah, you're is, appearing on Blink-155 alone. Is, uh... Yeah, this is a death <laughs> sentence. This is my swan song. <laughs> I got my pop-punk diatribe out into the world, my chemistry metaphor. And that's, <laughs> that's really that good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, okay. So, but, but I just wanted to get back to Scrams for a second. Like, oh are God. you into music where there's, like, really earnest spoken word parts? with like No. Ooh, well, so... yes and no. Okay. That shit will make you feel so um, uncomfortable. Like, I feel like I'm watching Nathan for you when I hear that kind of music. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Also, just the concept that you have someone on stage that, um, you know, could be singing, but they're opting to not even try to sing. (laughs) They just want to tell you something. (laughs) is psycho. (laughs) Like... And I, I, we've toured with Me Without You, and I know that that band kind of flirts with that line, and I think Aaron does it so flawlessly. And so, obviously, so many people have, you know, um, sort of, like, moved in on that a same exact style, like his style. So, obviously, it works and it has massive appeal. Um, but, like, like a just like a, a bridge, like a hard stop, and someone just starts talking, that is so not for me. <laughs> right. So when, you, I've, so when you say that you love, like, the most earnest lyrics, there, there's still a limit of what you can stomach. Oh, totally. Cause I mean, when you're like flirting with Ernesty, it can be so cheesy and it can also be so alienating. Like I'm not into like a song about how you went outside today and like a bird shit on you. Like, I don't give a fuck about that. <laughs> I just want to like read your diary like, and not, and not where you're recounting, like recalling your day, like what, what your day made you feel like. That's my shit. Right. I can see that. So like, what's a, what's, what blank song to you has like the, the best lyrics? Oh, fucking Christ. I was not ready for this question. <laughs> um, I think, uh, is it, there's, is it Wendy clear? Wendy clear has good lyrics. I think I'm, I'm saying this right now as I'm opening the genius app, which by the way, is a fucking terrible app. Oh my God. It's horrible. And people don't even annotate things as much as they should. Like the annotations are dumb, but at least do more of them so we can make fun of them more often. Totally. And also I know that this is a divisive topic, but I love when artists and bands like annotate their own songs just because like if someone asked me about one of my songs, it's like, all right, sit down because I'm about to fucking talk your ear off. <laughs> um, so and I like I like that about music. Why is God, this app is truly fucking terrible. I'm just going to say for the sake of. Um, oh, I mean, Adam's song. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> so, OK, that song. We've already done that episode talking about the apple juice. Like, I don't care if that's from a real thing or if it's like some meaningful metaphor, you can't say the word apple juice in a serious song and not expect it to come across as ridiculous. No, that that's so fucked up that you would say that because that's my favorite line. That's the line that makes me want to die the most. (laughs) I mean, as a child who a is obsessed and very in love with his mother, I love her more than this world and be obsessed with apple juice and (laughs) see being emo enough to commit suicide. Like, you know, Oh my God, this episode is a trigger warning. I'm so sorry. But like, that line would re- I remember conf- big confession time and my bandmates know this, but like for the longest time as like a teen, that's all I couldn't listen to that song without crying. Really? Yeah. Because, and specifically it, because of the apple juice. I mean, that line is way up there on the reasons for sure. Wow. I don't know. Maybe I just don't have a heart. That. Well, oh my God, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> You've, okay. You have followed me for quite a while. Assuming yeah, I'm I, not on mute, you will know that I'm not. You're I don't not know. On mute. I, I don't mute. I think I have two people muted. That's like a <laughs> deep confession. I'll never reveal who. I've got like such a long and robust mute list, and it's mostly music people. But I'm, you're not. You're not I, on there. You're not on there. Oh, no. Really? Yeah, but I, I. I don't know. I feel like you don't tweet very often. Oh, I tweet too fucking much. But okay, it's the pairing of the apple juice line right before the like really esoteric please tell mom line. That is such a like one two punch of of like it like. Like, pretend you're, like, you're watching a movie. The apple juice line is, like, the camera zooming in, like, insanely close, really fast. And then the please tell mom line is, like, zooming out. And, like, before you zoomed in, like, the world was, like, bright and pretty and there were, like, flowers and sunlight. And then when you zoom out from the apple juice, it's, like, desolate and horrible. Like, that's, like, the imagery. That's what that's what fucks me up. That's what my brain sees. When yeah. Blue lines, like, that's fair. I, I just wish it was something other than apple juice. I don't know why. It's just, like, too too weird of a thing for me what is this why does this band love the apple imagery don't they have apple shampoo oh, apple shampoo yeah 
That's true, and probably maybe something else. I mean, I also think Mark's been recycling lyrics nonstop on the on the recent songs. Yeah. Okay. So, is there a tie-in? Um, I only listened to the "Hey, I'm Sorry" song like twice because I um, because it's 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 not <laughs> <laughs> it's it's an okay song and it's not. <laughs> It's just not this song, and I was doing my homework for this song. So, right, uh, is there like a lyrical tie-in? I don't think so. Other than I think, like, I honestly think that it seems like even when I was looking at Reddit today on the Blink One Eighty Two Reddit, people forgot that this song existed altogether. I'm sorry, and they own "Hey, I'm Sorry" is now the definitive Blink One Eighty Two apology song. Are you kidding me? Isn't that crazy? That's nuts. It's bonkers. And, and, yeah, I mean, so but I don't also, know. Okay, hold on. What do you think the median age of the people on the Reddit is? I want to say it's like really pathetic white guys in their 30s like me, but maybe okay. not. <laughs> <laughs> See, I have always grown up assuming Reddit was like that. And then um, I recently made – I got into podcasting and Reddit at the same time. I literally became a straight man oh earlier this year. God. And um, <laughs> out of boredom. Are you in cell bo- now? <laughs> yeah, I'm in cell now too. I'm like Morrissey. Um, I'm like the straight Morrissey. But, uh, <laughs> but okay, so anyway, I made a Reddit account and I – only made it to talk to kids about the new Say Anything record because I was so bored and knew no one was going to interview me about it. <laughs> and uh, um, uh, and a lot of them are young because a lot of them rec- like knew me from Twitter and shit like that. And like they'll DM me like on Twitter about things that are happening on Reddit. And they're not like they span the board, but I would say the medium age is like younger than me. So you just never know. So, yeah, and I do feel like like for me growing up, Dude Ranch was always like the the white album or something of blink 182 but then everyone says anima or even take off your pants now it's like yeah. so i guess i guess maybe i'm just getting older is what's happening yeah, I mean, unfortunately me too and it's uh, it's something i'm coming to terms with i'm like still fighting for my youth like all the time i went to buy alcohol the other day and got carded and was so happy <laughs> Wow! It's like here you go. It was at Walmart. I think they have to card you at Walmart, but it's still like you know, it jazz me all day. <laughs> okay, well, is there anything else in your research that you wanted to say about the song? No, I do want to say that um, the there is one thing. The line, the hold on, I'm scrolling. Um, the line, there's a line. Uh, we're unstoppable, indestructible. Nothing happens to our machine. That is the most folk punk lyric. Tom- <laughs> <laughs> it's so folk punk. Oh my god! It's so unbelievably folk punk. <laughs> like I bet, I bet there's someone out there that has that sharpie on acoustic guitar, <laughs> right. and someone like will see it and be like, "Oh, like you know, like I know that quote," and they're like, "No." That's a fucking Blink-182 quote. You're so stupid. Why did folk punk people love, like, machines and robots so much? I don't know. As a former member of that community, <laughs> a retired member of that community, I have a lot of questions still in my old age. Oh, no. That's going to be have to be your, your podcast that you start as unpacking your folk punk past. I actually want to start a podcast where I review the records that are on my high school iPod. Ooh. Um, but it's very limited, but uh, I was doing it for a while on Instagram and I would do it while I was driving. And then there was, a, there's backlash about people being like, you're not supposed to be on your phone when you're driving. Oh yeah. There's like, a lot of narcs out there. Yeah. But like, listen, I live, I'm, I did it cause I moved back to my hometown. It's like, I could drive on these streets blindfolded. Like, <laughs> <Right>. honestly, <laughs> like don't come to me. I know. Okay. Moving doing. back to your hometown and reviewing your high school iPod sounds more like a garden state sequel. Okay, well, um, yeah, I have nothing to say to that. I would defend Zach Rapp. Should I start following him on Twitter? I, okay, I think I've already talked about this on here, but when I was at Sundance this year, I literally saw Zach Braff making small talk with Ronnie Radke. Uh, I, 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 something just happened to me. <laughs> My skin just did something it's never done before. I was going to say I got chills, but these are not chills. They're the opposite. Yeah, okay, my, my last bad. question for you is this. What is some advice you can give to our listeners on how to thirst tweet? Oh, fuck. Um, just be smart about it. Like, don't don't tweet anything, A, expecting to get anything back, or B, don't tweet anything that you wouldn't want to read yourself. 
Like, you know, it has to fall in a spectrum and you have to just have got to be smart about who your target audience is when you're thirst tweeting. <laughs> Excellent. Is there anything else that you want to plug? Did my voice get serious for that? I was trying to plug. <laughs> it was really good. It was very oh. instructional. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Good. Wow. <laughs> Um, anything else I want to plug? Uh, I'm recording a solo record. I start recording it next month. And then this summer, uh, the goal is to have the new museum off record tracked. So that will be cool. The solo project is called gay meat. The new museum off record will hopefully be out next year. Uh, we're trying to become a real band again this fall. We're playing two festivals and we're doing some, uh, some touring that hasn't been announced yet. So that's what I've got on my horizon. And some merch, hopefully. Oh, new merch. Yes. Very excited about the merch. More gay merch. When I first submitted that design to Equal Vision, I, they're going to, if anyone from the label listens to this, they're going to fucking sue me and then finally drop me. But uh, <laughs> there was a gentleman that worked there for a little while who, when I first emailed that design over, he was like, hey, this is really cool and really pretty, but do you have like anything else? <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, uh, yes, we do. But also, what's the problem with this? And he's like, oh, I don't want to. And he was basically just saying that, like, you know, merch like this is it's polarizing and it it's not it closes off your audience a little bit. You know, it's more of a niche market thing. And he was like, I just think like another design would sell a little bit better. And I was like, OK, well, I'll give you this other design we have that is also gorgeous. But I bet a gay shirt will sell more. And you know what? I'm still getting royalty checks every month for the gay shirt. So. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, Ed, I don't think it works there anymore. So I really <laughs> fucking won. Like you've, in a ruined, way you've ruined his entire life. <laughs> so I don't, I hope not. Cause I don't need that kind of karmic justice. Coming back to me, yeah. He probably just wanted you to make a hoodie that has BA on one side and then NE on the other side and you zip it up. And yeah. MU on one side, SE on the other side. Yeah, that would be good. Muse. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> that was the joke. <laughs> I can read. I love it. Thank God. <laughs> you can also use Skype, which is something I didn't know I could do before an hour ago. So. Don't bite your tongue.